I must accomplish three things in my lifetime, build a house, plant a tree, and raise a child. I really hope that by the time I open this bottle, it will all be done, was written in a careless scrawl on a crumpled, yellowed piece of paper. Josh looked contemplatively at what was written. How quickly time flies, he thought. It's hard to believe that more than 10 years have passed, and it's time to read that letter to the future that he sealed in a bottle and buried in his parents' yard when he was young. Josh remembered that day well when he rushed home after the final school bell, burst into the apartment, and quickly scribbled something on a sheet of paper torn from an old chemistry notebook. He wanted to preserve in his memory that moment when he entered, no, when he plunged into adulthood. An 18-year-old guy full of ambitions, ideas, and grand plans, determined to fulfill them all. And now, here he was again in his childhood home, sitting on the bench where J plus B equals love had been written once, holding that very piece of paper in his hands. I wrote so incomprehensibly back then, he muttered to himself in a whisper. It was time for him to honestly answer all the questions and goals he had set for himself back then. He studied the letter with interest and decided to go through it step by step. First build a house, not just any house, but a luxurious villa on the French Riviera, now belonged to him. So, this point could undoubtedly be considered accomplished. Second, plant a tree. Several years ago, while the villa was being built, he personally planted an entire garden around it. He brought saplings from the nursery, dug and watered them, done. And third, raise a child. Well, no matter how you look at it, his daughter hadn't grown up yet, but she was actively working towards it. In the blink of an eye, another 10 years would pass, and she would be almost an adult. It was a pleasant thought, realizing that the letter from the past had been opened by a successful and accomplished individual who had managed to achieve all their goals and fulfill their own hopes. However, for some reason, as he looked at the sheet of paper, he felt not joy but a strange melancholy and sadness settling deeper within him with every new line he read. It was as if, despite all he had gained, there was something he had still lost, and that something was the most important. Josh turned the page over and continued reading. I hope everything is going well with Paula there. If we're lucky, we won't have to be apart and we'll stay in the same city for our studies. She said today that she won't let me go anywhere anyway. I don't want to be away from her either. I think as soon as we figure out our admissions, I'll propose to her. Take care of her in the future. Josh grasped each line, feeling a lump in his throat, and inside him, that all too familiar sense of despair and pain took hold. He had spent several years in such a state, and when he finally decided to let go of that fateful event and move on with life, something reminded him of Paula, his first and greatest love. Josh had always known about Paula's serious illness. He knew that one day it could take her away forever, but when there was a whole life ahead and a multitude of plans, it seemed unreal. It could happen to anyone, just not to her, and for a while, everything was indeed going very well, but that was then. Now, almost four years had passed since she was gone. Paula had cystic fibrosis, a disease that affected the lungs due to the improper functioning of certain organs. Unlike most patients, she had never experienced complications. She never complained, tried to stay active in sports, and overall gave the impression of a healthy and strong person. But then, everything happened too quickly. Usually, women with such a diagnosis did not dare to have a child, but Josh and Paula believed that with today's advanced medicine, everything would be fine. Unfortunately, her condition deteriorated sharply during pregnancy, and just five months after their daughter was born, her lungs failed. They couldn't save Paula. It was perhaps the most difficult thing Josh had ever had to endure in his life. He didn't know how to cope with it. In the immediate aftermath of his wife's death, he was utterly lost. He couldn't accept the fact that he would never see Paula again, touch her, or hear her voice. It seemed like just recently she was bustling in the kitchen, riding a scooter along the waterfront so full of life and happiness. Back then, their house was still under construction and they lived in an ordinary apartment, but it was filled with more life and warmth than the spacious villa he now resided in. Everything came to such an abrupt and irreversible halt. Now, when Josh returned from work, there were no lights in the windows, no one to greet him. Perhaps Paula had just gone somewhere and would be back soon. 
and everything would return to how it used to be. However, one month followed another, and no one came. Josh didn't find any solace either. As their daughter grew a bit older, it became clear that she was a spitting image of her mother. In her movements, her smile, her laughter, Josh saw Paula. The pain was replaced by emptiness inside, and Josh decided that he would never enter into new relationships. He had immersed himself in his career, actively developing his business, and within the next three years, he achieved a seven-figure income. Josh had his own network of restaurants in Monaco, which had become quite prestigious. Despite his busy schedule, he always found time for his daughter. He played with her, put her to bed, and gave her gifts. While he was occupied, her grandparents looked after her. But as time passed, his new successful life seemed to flow like a fog. One day, he realized that he no longer wanted to live solely for his child and work. As difficult as it was, the past could not be brought back, nor the people from it. Life was moving forward. It wouldn't get any easier if he spent it regretting and reminiscing. Josh decided it was time to make changes. No amount of wealth in the world could replace love. And then, his phone vibrated in his pocket. He quickly folded the note and checked the call. The screen displayed an incoming call from Elizabeth. Hello, Elizabeth, are you free? He answered the call. Yes, almost, replied a bright female voice on the other end. I just need to stop by the store. We don't have anything for dinner. Can you pick me up in about 30 minutes? Yes, of course. All right. See you soon. Kisses. I kiss you too. Josh hung up and looked at the ground thoughtfully for a few seconds. Then he sighed, turned around, and headed towards the entrance. Before leaving, he needed to pick up his daughter from her grandparents. Today, he had promised Jennifer to spend the evening together. Daddy, the little girl rushed to him as soon as he stepped through the apartment door. Amanda and Liam, with reading glasses perched on their noses and a newspaper in hand, peeked out of the room right after her. So, did you dig up your letter? Amanda quickly inquired. I did. Josh nodded as he lifted Jennifer into his arms. And what, you mean to say that no one touched it or stole it all these years? Amanda furrowed her brow. No one touched it. I hid it very well back then. In the end, did you fulfill all your wishes? His mother continued to question as her son stood against the wall, intently studying the crossword puzzle in the newspaper. Almost, Josh replied. Come on, what didn't you fulfill? Amanda frowned. Mom, it doesn't matter, Josh sighed. We need to head home now. Jennifer, get ready. Are we going with Elizabeth? The little girl brightened up. Yes, yes, with Elizabeth. Hooray. Jennifer rejoiced and ran back to her room to get her backpack. As soon as Josh raised his eyes, he met his mother's stern gaze. You are seeing her again, she asked grimly. Yes, mom, again. Why does he keep bringing strangers into the house instead of spending time with his child? She grumbled. Elizabeth is not a stranger, and Jennifer likes her, Josh explained. Josh, Jennifer is four years old. She likes everyone, Amanda pointed out. But tell me, why are you making the child get used to this girl? She's practically living with you already. But you're always complaining that no one cooks homemade meals for me, Josh retorted as if she's going to cook for you. Amanda scoffed. Elizabeth has been cooking for me for almost six months now, he replied. Josh was tired of arguing with his mother about Elizabeth every time. Amanda was generally a rather stern woman, and she only melted for her granddaughter. Mostly, Josh was used to seeing a skeptical expression on her face. She had a hard time accepting new people, and Elizabeth had initially refused to be accepted. Although she had never even met her personally, Josh was the only and relatively late child in the family. His mother gave birth to him at the age of 37, not because of health problems but simply because she wanted to live for herself. According to Amanda, she intended to dedicate the remaining best years to her son, and let's not be hard on her. She fulfilled her promise. However, unlike what often happens with late children, Josh was not pampered or doted on like a little prince. On the contrary, after reading articles about selfish and spoiled children, Amanda immediately took control of his upbringing. She coached him herself, monitored his academic performance, diet, health, and even chose the right friends for her son to prevent him from falling into bad company. 
Perhaps, in the future, this upbringing contributed to Josh's ability to navigate through the most difficult and awkward situations and to work hard in any circumstances. That was probably where the benefits of such upbringing ended for Josh. He hated his childhood, which was practically non-existent. But at that time, he couldn't do anything about it. He could only dream of moving away from his mother as soon as possible. At the age of seven, he understood that there was a real matriarchy in his family. His father found it easier to stay silent and agree with everything rather than oppose Amanda's decisions. Josh himself quickly learned that his mother's word was law, no matter what it was. Mother is always right. Mother will never give bad advice. Therefore, even to this day, it was difficult for this grown and accomplished man to properly oppose Amanda on certain matters. Every time he stood in front of his mother, he became a little boy again. Moreover, on top of everything else, the woman now had heart problems, and Josh tried in every way to worry her as little as possible, not to upset or disappoint her. Fortunately, so far, he had succeeded in this regard, except for the situation with Elizabeth. He still had a somewhat vague idea of how his parents meeting his new girlfriend would go. At one point, he had already tried to inform his mother that he was with Elizabeth now, whether she liked it or not. She immediately clutched her head and began to lament that it would lead to no good. On the contrary, his father tried to support his son, to which his wife quickly jumped and shouted at him so much that he, out of habit, fell silent and went to his room. Sometimes Josh felt that his mother was still a perfectly healthy woman in the prime of her life, capable of easily reigning in anyone, but she pretended to be sick just to attract attention or even for blackmail. She understood that her son had long ceased to agree with her on everything. The man didn't want to start proving something to his mother for the umpteenth time, so he was very happy to see that Jennifer was already waiting in the corridor. After a quick farewell, they went outside, and Josh placed his daughter in her child seat. The little girl enthusiastically shared the news of their day, talking about how they had walked in the park with her grandmother, fed pigeons, and had ice cream. It was amazing that Amanda did not apply her strict upbringing to her granddaughter. On the contrary, she pampered and spoiled her in every possible way. After the story about their outing, the little girl started planning the evening and which board games they could play for dinner. Hey, Dad, what about Elizabeth? Jennifer suddenly perked up, noticing that they had driven past the familiar square where they usually picked up the girl. We're going around. She's at the store right now. Her father reassured her. They didn't have to wait long. After parking at the nearest market, they immediately noticed a girl in a white t-shirt and jeans running towards the car. Even from a distance, she smiled joyfully and waved her hand, which made Jennifer happy. Elizabeth opened the door and sat in the front seat. She was a simple, friendly, and very bright girl in both the literal and metaphorical sense. Her hair was almost golden by nature, cascading below her waist which is why Josh often called her Rapunzel. Elizabeth entered Josh's life a year and a half ago, just shortly after he decided to change and break out of his prolonged apathy, and perhaps this girl helped him a lot with that. They didn't have any extraordinary story of how they met. Elizabeth simply came for an interview at one of Josh's restaurants on the very day when he decided to personally select employees. The girl had just graduated from college and was trying to get a job as a hostess. It's worth mentioning that there were plenty of applicants for the position, many of whom were older and more experienced. However, what impressed Josh the most was Elizabeth. She was not only one of the most polite and pleasant candidates, but also very confident despite her minimal work experience. Josh was amazed at how easily, firmly, and quickly she answered all his questions. It seemed impossible to phase her. That's why he decided that he would like to have such an employee in his restaurant. At first, they were acquaintances and good conversationalists, but they quickly became friends and then a couple. When it all started, Josh didn't immediately notice how he deliberately began to visit the restaurant where Elizabeth worked more often to spend time in her company. He started suggesting dinners together after work and inviting her for walks. Everything progressed very quickly, but it didn't bother the man at all. Rather, he suddenly realized that he had felt something he had been missing all these years. The cold emptiness inside him was filled with something warm. A genuinely sincere smile appeared on his face more often, and there was a sparkle of lost joy in his eyes. In short, 
Elizabeth burst into his life and illuminated it like a ray of sunshine. Somehow, they skipped the awkward stage of getting to know each other and immediately became close to each other. Elizabeth became the only person during all this time to whom Josh could open his heart, share his feelings, and talk about his past grief. So Elizabeth knew about little Jennifer and Paula. Josh had decided not to go into details and not to mention the specific reasons behind his former wife's passing, thinking that such conversations might distress Elizabeth. However, Elizabeth handled the situation with great care. Josh couldn't help but be pleased with how calm and easily Elizabeth accepted his daughter. The little girl was always delighted to see her. Elizabeth, too, had grown fond of the child. Every time the three of them went out together, people warmly smiled at them, assuming they were a close-knit family, and Josh finally realized that he had found the right person who had brought happiness back into his life. He truly loved Elizabeth, and thoughts of proposing and getting married had started to occupy his mind. He was confident that his mother wouldn't interfere, no matter what she said. The only thing that continued to bother him was the inevitable introduction of Elizabeth to his mother, and Amanda didn't even want to hear about it. But there was no point in postponing it any longer, as both Josh and Elizabeth had serious intentions. However, for now, the man preferred not to think about the meeting between his mother and his girlfriend. What did you buy? Josh asked with curiosity as he peeked into the shopping bag. Nothing special. Vegetables, fruits, chicken for tomorrow. For dinner, nuggets and vitamins for Jennifer. Elizabeth replied with a smile, adjusting her hair. And also toothpaste and shampoo. Why do you always choose such cheap ones? Josh raised an eyebrow, taking out the shampoo tube. He always transferred enough money to her for shopping, but for some reason, Elizabeth constantly opted for the most budget-friendly and lower-quality brands of cosmetics and personal care products. Well, she shrugged innocently. My hair seems to lay just fine as it is. Why overpay? Maybe you're right. You're beautiful no matter what. I know, she whispered and then giggled, pecking him on the cheek. A few minutes later, the car approached a security gate, which Josh easily raised using his personal remote granting them access to a wide, beautiful street lined with private houses. The road was adorned with bushes along the sides, gardens behind ornate fences, and of course, the high roofs with panoramic windows. One didn't need to be an expert to confidently say that affluent people resided in this area. Josh's villa was located at the very end of the street, in a very convenient and cozy spot. He parked the car in the garage and carried all the bags inside. Elizabeth helped Jennifer get out of the car and held her hand as they walked to the door. As soon as Josh entered the kitchen and began unloading the groceries, Elizabeth sprang into action. She took the bag, turned on the TV with some program, and started frying the nuggets, humming to herself. Jennifer fidgeted at her feet, eager to help. She pulled a chair over, climbed onto it, and at Elizabeth's request, began washing the fruits before putting them in a vase. Josh, left with nothing to do, simply sat down on the couch. How happy he was to once again feel like he was part of a family. He watched the girl as she effortlessly and skillfully managed everything in the kitchen. A few years ago, Paula had occupied Elizabeth's place, or rather, it was Elizabeth who took her place. Josh tried to push away such thoughts but couldn't help comparing her to his ex-wife. They were so different and it's so similar at the same time. Despite their complete dissimilarity in appearance, Elizabeth definitely had something that reminded him of Paula. And sometimes, scattered thoughts crossed his mind. Paula would have done the same. I'll be a bit late tomorrow. Elizabeth suddenly turned to him. Don't come to pick me up. I'll make my own way. What's going on? Josh asked Lazily, reclining on the couch with his hands behind his head. After work, some errands came up, and I need to stop by somewhere. Where are you going? Josh inquired casually, raising an eyebrow. I want to visit a hair salon. Elizabeth replied, Do you want to do something with your hair? Josh raised his brows. Yes, you'll like it, she winked. Now, to the table. I'm setting it up. All right, I'm looking forward to it, Josh said thoughtfully, not sure if she was referring to dinner or potential changes to Elizabeth's hairstyle. Jennifer had already run to her room, bringing one of her board games. So, while everyone was setting up and going over the rules, Josh once again got lost in his thoughts. 
it was actually a good thing that Elizabeth had plans for tomorrow. That way, Josh would have some free time to do what he had been postponing for a while, talking to his mother about Elizabeth. It was long past due to propose to Elizabeth and make their family official. However, before doing that, he wanted to introduce his parents to his new partner so that everyone could get along. That was the only thing worrying Josh. But once that stage was behind them, there would be nothing left to worry about. Tomorrow, he must visit his mother and inform her about everything. Elizabeth herself had mentioned that she had long been prepared for a conversation with Amanda, even if it would be a difficult one. Josh was afraid that his mother would subject her to a real interrogation. In the future, Elizabeth would undoubtedly do her best to avoid meetings with the woman. Dad, Dad, Jennifer tugged on his sleeve. Lost in his thoughts, he hadn't even noticed that everything was already set up, and his daughter was eagerly waiting for his move. Only one dot appeared on the dice, and Josh hopped to the nearest island. A bit farther away was Elizabeth's figurine, and Jennifer had jumped ahead. Dad, how could you do that? You're the last one. Look, Elizabeth already has a plan to win. What about you? Jennifer asked, stuffing a large nugget into her mouth. Josh had a lot of plans in his head. He watched as Elizabeth looked at the little girl with affection, as if she were her own daughter, and once again reaffirmed the correctness of his choice. Therefore, he wanted the moment of proposing to be special, original, and memorable, and as he drifted off to sleep at night, he mentally selected a ring, one that, in his imagination, had to be magnificent and expensive. He hoped that Elizabeth didn't suspect his plans for the near future. Dad, it's your turn again. His daughter's cheerful voice broke him out of his reverie. Josh rolled the dice and moved his game piece to the appropriate number. Great, now you and Elizabeth are tied, and I'm ahead. Jennifer concentrated on shaking the dice and looked disappointed when only a one appeared. We'll see who wins. Elizabeth playfully wagged her finger as she moved her game piece six spaces forward. The next day was a challenging one. June 9th. Josh spent the entire morning at the square with Jennifer, where a celebration was held in honor of Children's Day. There was music, animators and costumes, toys were distributed, and cotton candy was everywhere. However, after a few hours of eating sweets to her heart's content, the little girl had to be taken to daycare. Neither the parents nor the grandparents could watch over her around the clock, so sometimes she had to go to daycare. But in this particular case, Josh intentionally didn't want to bring her to his parents, as he had a serious conversation ahead. He secretly hoped that his father would be on his side in case of anything, but even this modest hope shattered within a couple of minutes. Liam was at work. However, there was no turning back now, and Amanda was already standing there, scrutinizing his face. Coffee Ordy? She asked instead of a greeting. Coffee, Josh agreed thinking to himself that he wouldn't mind something stronger right now. With every passing second, he grew more nervous. Why are you standing by the doorway? Go to the kitchen. Josh trudged deeper into the old apartment. A year ago, he had suggested that his parents move to a new place, but they refused, saying that they were attached to this apartment. It was their own, beloved, and cozy place. Instead of moving, his mother got a new car. She was mostly the one who drove in their family. Josh had wanted to buy one for his father, but he had modestly shaken his head. Why spend money unnecessarily? If needed, I'll take mom's car, Liam would say, while the stern voice from the neighboring room would already warn. Just try it. Mom, I want to talk to you about something. Josh began, tracing patterns on the tablecloth with his finger. Sure, I'm all ears, she replied. Mom, I'm a grown man and I've made a deliberate decision. I want to marry Elizabeth for the second time because... Have you lost your mind? She interrupted immediately. No, Mom. But it certainly seems that way to me. Mom, I'm going to marry her anyway, whether you like it or not. I'm not 15 anymore, nor am I 25, for you to dictate my life. On your part, I would try the opposite, to accept this and have a positive outlook so that your meeting with her goes well. Josh, what's gotten into you? Has she brainwashed you completely? Think about your daughter in the end. It's precisely because of her that I'm thinking about this. I want her to have a loving mother. Do you think I would say such things about someone I wasn't sure about? What kind of mother? A stepmother. Do you think someone can genuinely love another person's child? 
You're not a stupid guy, yet you're acting like you're in a romanticized melodrama. It's time to return to reality, Josh. Amanda snapped her fingers in front of the man's face. If you've decided to replace your own child, why do you immediately say replace? I still have my whole life ahead of me. Why don't you want your son to find love and be happy? If you've decided to replace your own child, ignoring her entire last tirade, the woman continued, then at least remember Paula. Josh flinched. Why did his mother decide to dredge up past issues and touch upon the most painful and intimate topic? Sensing that she had hit the right nerve, Amanda continued to press. Remember Paula. Do you think she would be pleased to find out that you've brought a stranger into her home, and now this woman will take charge in her place, interact with her child? In her time, Amanda also didn't want to accept Paula, but she soon warmed up to her and grew very fond of her. Josh was even surprised at how smoothly everything had worked out back then. His mother truly accepted and supported her son's choice, but it had been simpler then. There were reasons for the woman to trust that girl. Paula had been with Josh since school. From the earliest days, she had been through thick and thin with him, helped build the business. Josh didn't want to bring up Paula, especially when the conversation initially revolved around Elizabeth. After all, he had decided to let go of the past and not mention or compare Elizabeth to his ex-wife. He was grateful to her for everything she had given him in life. But now there was another woman by his side. So, Josh quietly replied, I think, I think Paula would have wanted both me and our daughter to be happy. She would have wanted Jennifer to receive a mother's love, even if not from her, then from someone else. Jennifer is still young. She can accept Elizabeth as a mother, and she practically already has. I won't trust my granddaughter with this girl. I love Elizabeth, and I've known her for a long time. So, remind me, how long have you known her? One year or a year and a half? Who gets married after just a year of knowing each other? Wake up, Josh. Don't you see everything unfolding right before your eyes? You're a successful, wealthy businessman, and she's a young girl who has barely finished her studies. She decided to find herself a rich guy and conveniently settled in. Josh's eyes widened, and he almost choked with indignation. I'll take care of my own finances, and how can you speak like that about someone without even knowing them? He exclaimed, rising from his chair. From your stories, I've formed a pretty good impression of her. Tell me, when does everything ever go so perfectly, right? When it's all orchestrated and calculated in advance for you to fall blindly in love and she pops the question. She's all sweet and modest, and she's just appeared in your life, yet she's helping with everything. You don't have any disagreements, and on top of it all, she easily accepted someone else's child, which is very strange, and you're sending her large sums of money every day, aren't you? I won't be surprised if she's after your fortune. Just try to marry her. I'm absolutely sure you won't gain anything from it. It seems you've completely lost it, Josh said forgetting all his good intentions. Instead of being happy that everything has finally worked out for your son, you are trying to slander his fiancée and ruin everything. You never believed in me and only criticized. Thanks, Mom. I guess every child dreams of that. Josh felt a surge of anger, and it seemed his mother shared his emotions. Their conversation escalated, and it almost turned into a scandal when suddenly Amanda clutched her chest. Pills? She wheezed. What pills? Josh asked in alarm and rushed to her side. On the top shelf, there's a pink box. Josh read to the cabinet, retrieved everything he needed, and handed it to his mother with a glass of water. She took the medication and stared at the wall, breathing quickly and heavily. One hand still rested on her chest, while the other cradled her head. Josh let out a slow sigh and sank weakly into his chair, afraid to look at Amanda. You're going to drive me crazy, Josh, you will, she sobbed. I'm just worried about you. Your heart was broken once, so why do you want it to happen again? You don't even know Elizabeth at all, and you can't know how things will turn out. Why do you keep being so negative? Josh whispered. Don't you believe there are good, genuine people out there? Amanda remained silent, only shaking her head faintly. Maybe we should all get together. You can talk to her, and you'll see there's nothing to worry about. Josh continued. And I will marry her. I have a feeling that if that really happens, I'll just keel over. You're too naive, Josh. You don't know today's girls and how everything works. My heart is pounding. It hurts. 
So, should I call an ambulance? Her son asked, frowning. Call one. Amanda responded bitterly. Call it. Even in such a moment, his mother found something to reproach him for. As Josh left the entrance, he felt terrible. An ambulance had just taken his mother. He watched the departing ambulance with a sad look and realized that he didn't want to go home right away. He wanted to be alone, clear his head. So he walked aimlessly along the crack sidewalk, stretching ahead and further ahead. Thoughts that had been with him since his teenage years swirled in his head. Why does everyone else have normal mothers and I have such a mother? Why does she only see the negative in everything and can't be happy for me? Previously, he had firmly believed you should respect and cherish your mother, and a mother is always right. However, now it all seemed less straightforward. That's why, in his mother's eyes, Elizabeth had to turn out to be bad and cunning. Why couldn't his mother just sincerely support Josh, listen to him, help with everything, love someone else's child, and always be perfect? Josh shook his head, dispelling these unwelcome thoughts. The last thing he needed was for his mother's beliefs to influence him. Fortunately, he had a more positive view of life. No, he knew that Elizabeth was a simple, loving, one-of-a-kind person who should be by his side. Yes, they had only known each other for two years, but it felt like she had been with him for at least half his life. So why way too he didn't need his mother's approval to propose? Josh returned home alone. Elizabeth had promised to pick up Jennifer from daycare. They already knew her there, and they handed the child over to her. Josh slumped onto the couch and started looking at rings on online jewelry stores. He was still tired and upset, so he found this activity the most soothing. To avoid Amanda's nagging, he wouldn't change his decision. He had to call his mother at the hospital, ask how she was doing. After all, he should always be a good son, right? But honestly, Josh didn't feel like talking to a woman at the moment. Surprise! Someone shouted cheerfully in his ear. Jennifer had sneaked up on him unnoticed. Josh slapped his cheeks lightly, trying to shake off his bad mood, and smiled brightly. Sweetie, I didn't even notice you here. Look, what did you make at daycare? Jennifer proudly showed a beaded bracelet on her wrist and climbed onto the back of the couch. And we also caught a spider during our walk. At first, I was scared of them, but now I'm not. Can we go buy me a peck spider tomorrow, daddy? But you already have fish. Fish are boring. A spider is interesting. Josh couldn't manage to respond. Sometimes he marveled at how much energy could be packed into such a little child. She had woken up earlier than everyone else, spent the morning playing at the playground, and then played with the other kids at daycare. And now, nearly nine o'clock in the evening, she was still full of energy. The girl flipped upside down and slid down the back of the couch, nearly falling on the floor. Josh just managed to catch his daughter. He turned her back to her normal position and let out a resigned sigh. Jennifer's hyperactivity seemed to kick in at the least convenient moments. For example, right now, he'd much rather be lying on the couch, continuing to browse through endless engagement ring options, than listening to the details of today's daycare adventures while serving as a makeshift manicure and hairstyling mannequin. He loved his daughter, of course, but he also loved silence. By the way, Dad, we have a surprise, but Elizabeth needs to come. She's still taking off her shoes in the hallway. Elizabeth. Huh? A voice came from around the corner. Well, what's the surprise? Josh asked, peeking into the hallway. The young woman modestly appeared and entered the living room, covering her face with a bag. Remember I told you about the new hairstyle? She asked, are you ready? Dad, it's just awesome. Jennifer exclaimed. Can I get the same haircut too? The same? Josh asked. Despite his downcast mood, he couldn't hide his curiosity. Elizabeth tiptoed on the slippery laminate floor and froze. How could this cheerful and excited girl, who danced around with a bag on her head, be a wicked stepmother? They say that the older generation always suspects everyone of something. Three, two, one. Elizabeth swiftly removed the bag from her head and smiled shyly. Josh was stunned. He hadn't been prepared for this at all. Before him stood the same Elizabeth, but as if she were completely different. Nothing like herself. Her hair, which had always been smooth and golden, was now about one-fifth of its previous length. What did she say? A few small changes. Who knew that small changes meant a bob haircut? 
For a few seconds, Josh could only stare and blink. He had been so enamored with her long, knee-length locks. There was no way he could just reattach them. Do you like it? Elizabeth asked timidly. Well, what are you, Rapunzel, now? Josh finally managed to stammer. To be honest, this surprise turned out to be far from pleasant for him, and he couldn't fathom how anyone could willingly do this. Noticing his confusion, the girl sat beside him, embraced him, and gently kissed his cheek. Don't be mad. After all, Rapunzel also ends up with short hair at the end of the cartoon, she said. Josh nodded sadly. Why didn't you even tell me that you were planning to do this? He asked. I didn't want anyone to dissuade me, she replied. How long have you been planning this bob haircut? Josh peered into Elizabeth's face and squinted. Weren't you at all reluctant to cut off all your length? I'll have to get used to this new Elizabeth now. How should I perceive you without your long hair? He said with a sad smile. Why? For a moment, a hint of something dark flickered in the girl's eyes, and she quickly looked down, as if she too had already regretted what she had done. But hair does fetch a pretty good price, she added. Josh frowned. So you cut it to sell it? Yes, I mean, no, but I wanted to, just. Did you need money for something? I don't understand, Josh said skeptically. Elizabeth's reaction to this question was too strange. Could she seriously have cut her hair for money? It was absurd to sacrifice something like that when she could just ask him for help. Honestly, he didn't fully comprehend Elizabeth's attitude towards money. She hardly ever bought expensive things or spent much of the money Josh gave her, even though she had the means to do so. For the first time, Josh wondered what people who were afraid to spend other people's money were called. Nevertheless, despite the fact that Elizabeth hardly ever spent, Josh didn't reduce the amount he gave her. He never asked where the leftovers from his transfers went, and the sum remained quite substantial. Maybe she was saving up for something. Dad, can I get the same haircut tomorrow? Jennifer interrupted. Throughout the evening, the girl observed Josh, and he seemed, to put it mildly, not in high spirits. Could her new haircut have upset him so much? However, Elizabeth later remembered their conversation from yesterday. Josh was planning to talk to his parents about their relationship and personal meeting. Most likely, it involved some problems. Elizabeth knew about his mother's difficult nature, but she didn't think it was this bad. Although, to be honest, she herself was no stranger to difficulties with relatives. She and her younger brother were raised by their grandmother. She never knew her father and had no contact with him. Her mother disappeared from her life when she was nine. And as the years went by, her memories of her mother became increasingly vague. At the age of nine, children outgrow stories about astronauts and superheroes. So her grandmother presented her with the unvarnished truth. Mom now lives in another country with a man we don't know, and it's uncertain when she'll return, her grandmother had told her. Parting with her mother had been difficult for Elizabeth, even though her mother hadn't been particularly involved in her upbringing. Elizabeth had lived her whole life with her grandmother and brother until she moved into the dormitory. Her grandmother lived on the other side of town. Elizabeth didn't visit her frequently now, but the old lady had already met Josh. She considered him a pleasant young man, so she had no objections to their relationship. Josh had only met Elizabeth's brother. Now she watched as Josh slowly pushed his food around his plate, clearly lost in thought. She hesitated to ask how the conversation with his mother had gone. Only before bed did he inform her that his mother had been admitted to the hospital. However, Elizabeth still didn't know what had prompted the ambulance to be called and how Amanda had expressed herself that day. She had long noticed that Josh was deeply concerned about his mother's attitude toward her, Elizabeth. He had been trying to prepare both of them for the meeting for so long. So why not do away with unnecessary formalities? The more she worried, the longer it would take to finally resolve this. A clear plan had formed in her mind. Therefore, the next day, she rode her bike to the hospital, pedaling swiftly. She wore a light hat and a flowing dress. She needed to make a good impression on her future mother-in-law. A bag tangled from the handlebars of her bicycle, filled with fruits, juice, tissues, and hand sanitizer. In short, all the things typically brought for patients. Along the way, she second-guessed her decision several times, but she concluded that there was no turning back. It was better to do everything herself. 
and it would also be a surprise for Josh. Finding out in which hospital and ward Amanda was staying wasn't difficult at all. Josh readily answered all her questions as he scrolled for something on his phone. It seemed that he had no suspicions about why she might need such information. The only challenge was how to arrange the meeting itself. Elizabeth was neither a relative nor even an acquaintance of the patient, so she couldn't just walk in. After a short thought, she messaged one of her friends who was doing an internship at that hospital and explained the situation to her. The friend agreed to help and in the end, Elizabeth had to pay a little to convince the intern to switch with someone and take the next shift. It was all relatively simple maneuvers orchestrated by Elizabeth. Her plan to bring Amanda closer to her was beginning to take shape. The girl was hardly worried at all. She was on time for the appointment with her friend who had learned that the woman would be completely free at that moment. She hoped that Amanda's mood today would be as friendly as Elizabeth's. Dismounting from her bike and parking it at the hospital entrance, the girl walked into the reception area where her friend was already waiting. Don't stay too long. You're here illegally. Her friend cautioned. Will half an hour be enough for you? I think so. Elizabeth nodded and carefully sat down on a bench. Amanda was about to come down any minute, and she had to present everything carefully. So, Elizabeth decided to go over the prepared text in her mind. Good day. A rough voice from behind thundered. Elizabeth hadn't really expected that. She turned around and caught the questioning gaze of a tall, powerful woman. Despite that, she looked genuinely unwell, pale and tired. Amanda, the girl asked timidly, quickly getting up. Yes, who are you? My name is Elizabeth. Josh has probably told you about me. Amanda raised her eyebrows and slowly examined Elizabeth from head to toe with the piercing gaze of her dark brown eyes. Where is he now? He's at work right now, and I brought some fruits for you. The girl handed over the bags. The woman immediately accepted this kind gesture, and her face relaxed. All right, thank you, Elizabeth. Come by. She turned around on her soft slippers and headed for the door. Elizabeth was even taken aback. Wait, is there something else? Amanda stopped and gave the guest a heavy look. Don't you want to sit here for a while and talk? Talk? The woman asked again at least to get to know each other in person. I think it was long overdue. Get to know each other. So you decided to do it intentionally in Josh's absence. Why not? We can have a personal chat, so to speak, in an exclusively female company. Is Josh aware that you came to see me? The girl became flustered. To be honest, no, I didn't tell him yet. But I'll let him know as soon as I get back. I think he'll be pleased to hear that we've found common ground. Have we found it where Elizabeth's impression on Amanda was that of a naive simpleton? He wants to suck up, or is this all part of a cunning plan, and his beloved future daughter-in-law has worked hard on her image, decided to win daddy over, huh? I think we'll find it very soon, Elizabeth cheerfully replied. In the meantime, she flashed an encouraging smile. Amanda just snorted and stared at the floor for a few seconds before suddenly raising her head and her face brightened. She warmly embraced her new acquaintance. Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. Well, let's get to know each other. She sat down on a chair and pulled Elizabeth down onto another. The girl was surprised by this rapid change in the strange woman's mood but tried not to show it. How are you feeling? She asked to start the conversation. Well, as you can see, I have some issues. I hope you'll recover soon. Oh, I certainly hope so. Anyway, enough about me. Tell me, Elizabeth, who are you? What do you do? I work at Josh's restaurant as a hostess. I'm the front of house manager. Elizabeth explained, noticing the confusion on the woman's face. You work for him. Yes, but we're not strangers. Oh, right, sorry. The woman nodded. So, how close are you two? What do you mean? Well, who are you to Josh? Amanda inquired. Why do you boldly call him a non-stranger? Hasn't he told you? Elizabeth looked at the woman skeptically. Despite her initial attitude, Elizabeth was starting to feel a bit uncomfortable. The woman's behavior was strange, and perhaps she was trying to test her. Unfortunately, Elizabeth couldn't understand it yet, but she was beginning to suspect why Josh had been postponing their meeting. Moreover, she had suspicions that this wasn't just an unfortunate joke by Amanda. But could she really be so clueless about who Elizabeth was? Josh had repeatedly mentioned that he was preparing his mother for their meeting. 
Nevertheless, she patiently waited for the question she had to answer. I thought you knew. I'm his girlfriend. I mean, why would I come to visit you if I were someone else? Girlfriend. Why does he need a second girlfriend? Amanda seemed genuinely astonished. What do you mean? A second one. Oh, didn't he tell you? Tell me what? Elizabeth suddenly felt not just discomfort but clear alarm. What did this woman mean? Maybe she should seek help for something other than physical ailments. I'm just surprised that Josh has taken on someone else. I thought you were his partner or maybe a friend. Amanda casually said, almost yawning, as if the conversation was beginning to bore her. A million questions instantly swirled in Elizabeth's mind. She swallowed and involuntarily started fiddling with the necklace around her neck. Wait, I don't understand. I think I've lost track of the conversation. She exhaled, trying to clarify things calmly. What did you mean when you said I was second? Oh, I understand Josh now. Amanda muttered to herself. Don't worry, you can aid him until the wedding. What do you mean? A month, Elizabeth whispered in shock, her voice suddenly faltering. Does he have a mistress? But it's more accurate to say that you're his mistress, Amanda said. Now everything made sense. It was one of two things. Either Josh intentionally didn't want to introduce them to his mother because he knew she would spill the beans about his other relationship, which, if the woman's words were to be believed, was heading toward marriage. Or maybe it was just because his mother was insane. As selfish as it might sound, Elizabeth was inclined to go with the latter. Even if you don't take into account the crazy things the mother was saying, there's a simple question. What same person would casually discuss their son's infidelity or say to his lover, don't worry, feel free to be with him until he gets married. Elizabeth glanced incredulously at the now liberated Amanda. Maybe she should call a doctor. Perhaps poor grandma had a fever and she was delirious. Don't be angry with Josh. He loves you. The woman hurried to reassure her. You're beautiful, well, except for that ridiculous hairstyle. But people like Josh prioritize marriage over love. He needs someone suitable in terms of status. You're just not a good match for him. Don't tame too high. Find yourself a waiter or something. As soon as Josh gets married, you should step aside. I've already found a suitable bride for him. The wedding is planned for July. Elizabeth's eyes nearly popped out at such words. What are you talking about? She whispered in shock. Josh isn't like that. He has a mind of his own, and his parents can't decide whom he should marry. Nevertheless, there's a wedding planned for July. You must be out of your mind. Josh simply respects his family. Amanda nodded with significance. If your family isn't like that, I would seriously reconsider. But in our case, Josh prioritizes his parents and their decisions. Wait, are you serious about all this? Do I look like someone who would lie? Amanda replied with an air of self-importance. Elizabeth shook her head. She had no way of knowing if Amanda was deceiving anyone. Besides, Elizabeth was an adult who wouldn't take every word of an almost stranger at face value. At the very least, she needed to ask Josh about all of this personally. I think I'll be going, she said. It was nice to meet you, Amanda replied nonchalantly. Maybe we'll see each other again. She watched the young woman leave and began inspecting the groceries in the bag, quite satisfied with herself and her fabrication. No girl would put up with something like this or live with the thought that she was temporary or a backup plan. So Amanda was confident that Elizabeth would immediately pack her things and leave. If the girl wasn't too silly and naive, she would want to investigate further. That's when the deception could unravel. But Amanda had something in mind for that too. She would not allow this girl to continue living with her son. Elizabeth rushed out onto the street and quickly drove away. What a silly idea it was to come to the hospital alone, listening to some nonsense. Now she had to figure out whether it was true or not. What if Josh really was forced into a fake marriage? Or if he genuinely believed that profit came before everything else? Then what was her role, according to Amanda, until his wedding? Thoughts raced through Elizabeth's mind, jostling for attention. A wedding in July. A wedding in July. What on earth was that all about? She suddenly stopped took her phone out of her pocket, and dialed Josh's number. Why wait for their meeting when she could call? By this time, he should have been free, but to her dismay, she heard fast beeping sounds on the other end. He wasn't answering. Her worry grew, and she continued on her way. 
Josh was free earlier than usual today. He spent the entire day lost in thought, with too much to ponder. Among other things, he hoped that his anxieties hadn't transferred to Elizabeth. He wished she wouldn't clutter her mind with silly problems. Luckily, Josh had other, more pleasant topics to think about, specifically, how to propose to his beloved. So far, only the most banal ideas came to mind, but this moment had to be truly special, perfect. He needed to discuss it urgently with someone, get advice. Most people would have turned to their mother first, but not in his case. So, he decided to text a few reliable people. They were not only quite successful individuals and business partners, but also good friends of Josh. Who would have thought that his business would lead to numerous new successful acquaintances? Only two of them could make it to an impromptu meeting, Jack and Stanley. Woody promised to drop by a bit later when he was free. For now, the friends gathered in a small bar where they occasionally met to share news and discuss problems, delve into truly manly topics, and of course, have a few drinks. After all, even established men needed time not just for cultural leisure activities. The friends settled around a small round table. It was Tuesday, and the evening had just begun, so there were only a few people in the bar. Music played softly in the background. Occasional bursts of laughter echoed from somewhere deep within. But overall, the atmosphere was fairly calm. A beautiful young woman in a short, form-fitting dress was flirting with the bartender at the bar counter while her friends huddled a little way off. Can I get you something, miss? Asked the bartender indifferently, eyeing the charming young lady. She continued twirling a strand of hair around her finger. What can you recommend? She inquired, coyly biting her bright red lip. Anything you like. The menu is right in front of you. And what would you suggest? She persisted. Maybe you have some snacks. It's a shame, though. I have absolutely no one to share them with. But never mind. The girl let out an exaggerated sigh. Could you please tell me what your favorites are, for instance? I'm married, the bartender replied curtly. The girl gasped in disbelief and turned disappointedly toward her friends. Why are you laughing? She asked. Suddenly, Josh approached the bar counter. Three glasses of draft beer, please. He leaned on the countertop and a large cheese roll. The girl brightened up again. Oh, that's wonderful. I didn't even know they sold those here. Have you had them before? How do you like them? Fine, Josh replied, not even glancing at the girl. They go perfectly with beer. He quickly paid for his order and walked back to his table, leaving the charming lady in proud solitude. Yes, she said, scratching her head, then turned back to the bartender. Give me a beer. Meanwhile, Josh successfully reached his table holding three full glasses, and sat down with his friends. Who was that girl you were chatting with? Jack teased, subtly casting a glance at the girl. Well, look at that. She downed the beer in one go. It seems like you've broken her heart. Stanley, a good-natured curly-haired fellow, chimed in, earning Josh a deadly look. We need to discuss something very important and serious tonight, so let's leave all the extraneous chatter, Josh warned. Oh, now you've got us intrigued. We thought we came here to relax and chat. His friends responded. Come on, what's the problem? Josh absent-mindedly nibbled on a piece of the cheese roll. Jack and Stanley were aware of his relationship with Elizabeth, but he had never mentioned his plans to marry her. The two friends hadn't started families of their own yet, despite being older than Josh. They seemed to enjoy the single life. Stanley had dabbled in dating a few times, but he couldn't really call any of them serious relationships, let alone marriage. Often, it's in situations like these, seemingly distant from Josh's life, that the most interesting thoughts arise. Surely, they'd take it all more lightly and offer many fresh and intriguing ideas. That's why Josh decided to tell them about his intentions right away. Guys, I'm planning to propose to Elizabeth. He exhaled. I want to consult with you about it. Oh, come on, Jack interrupted, giving him a friendly pat on the shoulder. There are so many things to consider, but congratulations anyway. It's still early. I haven't done anything yet, just planning. I came here to discuss a few things with you, Josh clarified. But you're pretty serious about it. No turning back 100%. Stanley peered into Josh's eyes curiously. Before Josh could respond, Jack chimed in. But keep in mind, this is marriage. There are lots of nuances. And in case things go south, 
You can't just walk away. Oh, come on, don't scare him. Stanley laughed, shaking his curly head. If a guy wants it, he shouldn't miss out on family happiness. But it's not scaring him, it's stating facts. Josh also has a child. By the way, how does Elizabeth feel about that? Jack took a sip from his glass and grimaced. Everything needs to be sure, and in case things don't work out, you won't just walk away. That's not scaring, it's stating facts. Josh also has a child. By the way, how does Elizabeth feel about that? Jack took a sip from his glass and grimaced. Everything needs to be sure, and in case things don't work out, you won't just walk away. But this isn't scaring him, it's stating facts. Josh also has a child. By the way, how does Elizabeth feel about that? Jack took a sip from his glass and grimaced. Everything needs to be sure, and in case things don't work out, you won't just walk away. Stanley is right. It's not about scaring him, it's about considering all aspects. Josh responded, I wouldn't have come to discuss this with you if I had any doubts. I have something else I wanted to ask. Of course, Josh was confident, both in his decision and in Elizabeth's response, at least about 95% sure. However, if this kind of support from his friends continued, there was a good chance that Josh's confidence would indeed waver. Okay, okay, Jack chuckled, but I think we should go through the details. Are you absolutely sure you'll never forget your wedding anniversary or her birthday? Or, worst case scenario, her mother's birthday. She doesn't have a mother, Josh replied, for one. And for two, if any of you forgot, I was once married before. So, I don't need a list of all the delights of married life. It's been five years, Josh, Stanley said seriously. For your daughter, it's practically a lifetime. Frequent divorces happen over trivial arguments that they initially chose to ignore. I don't think we'd break up if I happened to forget someone's birthday. Josh rolled his eyes. All right, but what if, let's say, she gets tired and you have to cook for her and the whole family? Can you handle all the daily household chores, which might lead to arguments? Jack took a sip from his glass and grimaced again. Everything needs to be certain, and in case she doesn't feel ready, can you accept that? She's only 23. 22, Josh corrected. Listen, if I had any doubts, I wouldn't bother you with all of this. I had something else to ask. It seemed like his friends were subjecting him to a full-scale interrogation. What if she comes back from the salon expecting you to notice a change, and you don't? Jack inquired. Josh rolled his eyes. Come on. That only happens in silly comedies. Nearby, there she was again. The familiar girl with a cocktail in hand, who couldn't take her eyes off their table. Jack, lazily reclining in his chair, was the first to notice. Looks like one of us has caught her eye. He mused, clicking his tongue. Seriously, what's with her? Jack also glanced in her direction. She's starting to creep me out. She was hitting on the bartender earlier, and now she's on to Josh. Should I say something to her? Go ahead. Josh snapped his fingers, drawing her attention. Are you guys going to listen to me today, or not? I'm thinking about how to propose to her. I want something interesting and memorable. What's so difficult about it? Stanley shrugged. There are plenty of options. Look, invite her to a restaurant and ask the shecks to hide the ring in some dish beforehand. Josh gave his friend a sidelong glance. And what if she chokes on it or swallows it? How can you not notice a ring? Well, you never know. I ordered a half million dollar ring. I'd rather not have it eaten. Besides, a ring in food is more gross than romantic. What about in a drink? Jack, still not taking his eyes off the strange girl, suggested. No, none of these options are what I want. Josh sighed. I want something grand, something unforgettable. Well, then, take her to Paris and propose with the Eiffel Tower shining in the background. Stanley suggested. That's a classic. Jack, seriously, who have you been eyeing all night? Josh asked. Jack straightened up. I'm thinking, why bother racking your brains, guessing, and considering options when you can just approach any girl and ask her what kind of ideal proposal she'd expect from her boyfriend. But if you do that with the person nearby, she'll definitely not leave you alone after a question like that. Jack smiled. I'll give it a try. Jack actually got up, dusted off his clothes, and went over. Hey, if you're going somewhere, grab some more beers for us. Stanley requested. I've run out, and it looks like Josh is almost done too. 
No, no, I won't have any more. Josh protested. He didn't need to get drunk tonight. Oh, come on, why not? Seems like a good reason to celebrate today. Besides, who knows when we'll meet up again. Jack hurried over to the bar counter and returned with fresh drinks for his friends. Then, he approached the bartender once again, requesting a martini glass with a cherry elegantly perched on the rim. The enchanting lady, who seemed to have given up on their table, walked embarrassedly back to her friends when Jack approached her from behind and offered to sit down and chat. She brightened up finally. It seemed her charms had worked on someone at last. For the better part of the next hour, Josh and Stanley discussed various proposal ideas while discreetly glancing at the couple nearby. Among all the ideas Stanley presented, Josh only liked the one involving the Eiffel Tower. Planning a trip like that could indeed be feasible. However, Elizabeth would probably catch on to his intentions. According to Josh's plan, everything should be unexpected. So, for now, they discussed other options. Here's another one, Stanley suggested. Go for a seemingly ordinary stroll, but take her to a beautiful secluded spot and tell her, Elizabeth, we need to have a serious conversation. There's something about a relationship that bothers me. She'd get scared, naturally, thinking it's about some problem. Then you continue. What bothers me is that you're still my girlfriend, not my wife. She gasps. You get down on one knee and propose. Then you have a wedding. She gives you children, and you live happily ever after until you grow old and die on the same day. Josh laughed, finishing his second beer. You're quite the scriptwriter. You've scripted my entire life until the very end. What else do you have? Stanley's mind was an endless wellspring of ideas. He didn't even need a break to come up with something new. That was probably why his company was so successful. Here's another one. He continued without hesitation spend the whole day together, but with a twist. Every time you decide to do something, she picks one of the folded papers with different options written on them with her eyes closed. For instance, if you decide to have lunch, the options could be to go to a restaurant or cut together. If you decide to relax, the options might be going to the cinema or hitting the gym together. What she picks is what you do, but in the evening, give her a choice from two papers, both of them saying, will you marry me? She reads it, you get down on one knee, well, you know the rest, or you can do this in a restaurant. She reads it, and under the cloche is a ring box. Josh was continually amazed by Stanley's eccentric ideas, but that's what he loved about his friend. Stanley, satisfied with himself, drank a second glass and got up to fetch a third. You take your time deciding which one you like best. If that's not enough, we can come up with more, he said glancing at his wristwatch that sparkled on his wrist. By the way, around this time, Woody promised to drop by. He's the one you should consult. Josh really wanted to see Woody. It had been almost two years since Woody had moved to another city, and he only came to Monaco for work and other important matters. Woody wasn't a business partner. He was a police officer. Josh had met him a long time ago when his restaurants weren't as popular as they were now. However, back then, one of his restaurants had almost been closed due to an unpleasant incident involving Woody. During dinner at Josh's restaurant, an elderly woman suddenly felt unwell and was urgently taken to the hospital in a very critical condition. It turned out that her dessert had been contaminated with cinnamon, a spice to which the old lady had a severe allergy. When she placed her order, she had specifically inquired about this, but someone in the kitchen had still added cinnamon to her dessert and it was later revealed that this had been done intentionally. The culprit was her own grandson, the sole heir to her property, who couldn't wait for her demise to inherit her spacious three-bedroom apartment. Coincidentally, he also happened to be one of the chefs at the restaurant to push his grandmother in that direction. He deliberately added an excessive amount of cinnamon to her pastry. Josh shuddered as he recalled this story. Fortunately, the chefs were quickly identified, thanks to Woody, Later on, Woody informed Josh that the old lady had survived, but she had decided to sue her grandson. During this case, Josh and Woody had become friends. In the future, they often met at various events, where Stanley and Jack were also present. So, the kind police officer was acquainted not only with our hero. In addition, it was no secret to anyone that, at the age of 34, Woody was a happily married man with four children. 
So perhaps Stanley was right. He was the one to seek advice from. Unfortunately, after Woody moved, their communication dwindled to almost nothing. Josh wondered if Woody was aware of his relationship with Elizabeth. Josh had been scanning the bar's patrons for a familiar, stocky figure for a while, and there he was Stanley, who returned with Jack. I got her number, Jack boasted, waving a scrap of paper in the air. By the way, her name is Willow. Such a beautiful name. Did you at least accomplish the main goal for which you approached her? Did you find out what she considers the perfect proposal? Stanley skeptically inquired. Yes, Jack replied. He pulled out his phone, and in a high-pitched voice, he quoted, Well, I don't even know. It's so complicated. Although, I did come up with something. You see, there's this place in Turkey called Cappadocia. Every year, they release hundreds of hot air balloons that people ride in. I've dreamt of going there for a while now, floating above the earth in a hot air balloon. And if I could propose up there. Jack took a deep breath and continued in his own voice. She told me about these balloons, and today, I have a new dream. I googled it. It's amazing. The men exchanged glances. That's an option, Stanley said. Tell her thanks for the idea. Besides, this Willow is quite an interesting conversationalist. Jack interrupted Josh. She's studying journalism, by the way. Maybe I should take her to Turkey somewhere at the end of the summer. I was planning a vacation anyway, and I don't have anyone to go with. Jack, you've known her for, what, an hour at most? Josh smiled coming from the guy who's about to propose to a girl he's known for a year, Jack retorted. I'm just joking, of course. Not everyone appreciates my sense of humor, Josh said. Does Willow appreciate it? Yes, Jack assured them. And she has a beautiful laugh, by the way. Love at first sight, I'm telling you. Why did you come back to us so early, then? Stanley asked, settling into a chair. Jack shrugged. I thought Woody had already arrived. It's about time. Haven't you seen him? Nope. Someone's distinctive, familiar voice rang out from behind. Woody made his way to the designated table, illuminating the entire club with his bushy smile. He was dressed in a police uniform, which immediately caught the attention of most bar patrons. People turned their heads toward the table, where a confident police officer and three seemingly ordinary men were seated. Woody, what's with the scare tactics? Josh jumped up and warmly embraced him. Long time no see. Jack shined in. Did you come straight from work or what? As soon as I got off, I rushed over here. Woody chuckled, smoothing his mustache. After exchanging greetings, everyone settled back into their seats. Suddenly, Josh felt a bit woozy. He had already consumed more than two large glasses of alcohol tonight. He should have stopped by now, but Woody brought another bottle of strong spirits. Ah, uh, Woody sighed as he took a seat. I haven't sat like this with close friends in a long time. So, tell me, what's new with all of you while I've been away? Yes, let's hear from you. Stanley nodded. We haven't heard anything about you since you left almost two years ago. Woody slowly poured brandy into each glass, then began to share the truth about his life. As the conversation flowed, another couple of hours flew by. The bar was getting warmer, and soon Woody took off his jacket handing it on the back of his chair. Laughter emanated from their table, and the people who had previously stared at the police officer were now observing how he cheerfully and loudly recounted something, wiping his moist mustache. Josh had almost forgotten what everyone had been talking about before Woody's arrival. He sincerely marveled and enjoyed the company while laughing, as his phone in his pocket remained unanswered, ringing with calls from Elizabeth. She didn't know where Josh was at the moment and why he wasn't responding. He had only told her that he would finish up early tonight, which made her worry and doubt even more. The evening progressed, and Elizabeth had managed to come home, pondering her thoughts, picking up Jennifer from daycare, and preparing dinner. To anticipate, no one had touched it yet. Josh continued not to answer his phone, and when Elizabeth finally stopped calling, they all suddenly remembered her and the planned proposal. Josh is planning to get married, Jack casually interjected. When? To whom? Woody exclaimed, glancing at Josh. Do you have someone? Yes, Josh replied. Didn't I tell you? No, you didn't. Well, that's how it goes. So, when's the wedding? I haven't proposed yet. I'm still thinking about how to do it, Josh confessed. A proposal is great, Woody agreed. 
and if she says yes, when are we planning the wedding? We'll see, but I'd prefer not to wait too long. So, probably in August or even July, Josh said. That's the right approach. Woody supported him. July it is, then. Maybe I'll be back in Monaco at that time. I'll drop by. Some people take half a year to prepare. Who's the bride-to-be, by the way? Do I know her? It's just Elizabeth. Josh answered. In general, she's a good girl, 22 years old. She recently graduated from the International University of Monaco and now works as a manager for me. He quickly explained on behalf of everyone. Woody nodded in surprise. International University of Monaco. I used to frequent that place a lot before I left, conducting various briefings and sometimes, so to speak, educational conversations with some students. I remember an Elizabeth there. So many memories of her. Lishan, what's her last name? Maybe it really is her. He chuckled, finishing the last drops of brandy in his glass. Her last name is Banks. Come on, are you kidding me? Woody waved his hand dismissively. I'm joking, of course. Elizabeth Banks. Are you serious? See, Woody choked, taken aback. Well, yes. What's wrong with the name? Josh wondered. Show me a photo of her. Woody requested abruptly. While Josh struggled to retrieve his phone from his pocket, a surprised exclamation erupted at the table. It turned out that Jack had already found Elizabeth's Instagram account and showed Woody a few of her photos. That's her. I'm shocked, Woody mumbled. By the way, she hasn't changed much since her college days. Well, Josh, you certainly have good taste. Are you aware of her checkered past? Josh furrowed his brow. What do you mean by her checkered past? Do you know her? As I told you, I used to have students who occasionally needed some guidance, and Elizabeth was a regular guest. Woody explained, you see, her grandmother raised her, but it seems the old lady wasn't able to keep a close eye on her. The girl is smart, but she got involved in some foolish stuff. As far as I know, she got a job at some shady nightclub during her second year. She danced various dances for the patrons, and not the most respectable ones, he clarified. Later, that club that shut down, everyone was laid off, and those involved in illegal activities were prosecuted. Luckily for your Elizabeth, they didn't touch her because she hadn't done anything unacceptable. Well, relatively speaking, of course, but it caused quite a commotion at the university. They almost expelled her, but after some time, they sorted things out and showed her leniency. I had several preventive talks with her. I asked her why she got into that. She said she needed the money for a better life, but I highly doubt she would choose such work for that reason. I suspected she might have gotten into some debts. In any case, I still don't know the full story. She didn't tell you anything about this, did she? Josh sat there in shock. He hadn't expected this at all. Naturally, Elizabeth hadn't told him anything. In fairness, one could argue that if Josh had a similar past incident in his biography that he had decided to forget and leave behind, he would probably also keep it a secret from his partner to avoid unwanted inquiries and arguments. Probably. Everyone makes mistakes in their youth. The important thing was that Elizabeth was now a good and decent person. She worked in a prestigious restaurant and didn't go to nightclubs. Well, she didn't go anywhere at night, that's for sure. She always informed Josh of her whereabouts, so he always knew where his girlfriend was. At least, he sincerely hoped so. Everything Woody had just shared was so strange and didn't resemble Elizabeth in any way. And no matter how hard Josh tried, he couldn't picture her in a short, provocative outfit, dancing in front of a crowd at a nightclub. Woody. Are you absolutely sure you're talking about my Elizabeth? He asked cautiously. His friend nodded. For better or worse, yes. I had my share of trouble with that back then. Seeing Woody's solemn expression, he felt uneasy. Maybe he shouldn't have said all of this if Josh had fallen in love with Elizabeth and things were progressing toward a wedding. There must have been a reason. Woody didn't want to spoil the impression or the relationship with memories of the past. So Woody hurried to make amends but I'm glad that everything is fine with her, or rather, with both of you. It's been a long time since I've talked to her, but if you've decided to marry her, then she must have changed, become a different person. Woody tried to sound encouraging. Was she different before? Woody realized he had misspoke again. Well, she was a bit peculiar. He reluctantly admitted. How peculiar and what way? 
Oh no, Josh's curiosity was not going to lead to anything good. It wasn't going to lead anywhere. But still, he believed he had the right to know about his future wife's past. Even if he never brought up this topic in the future. Even if he never directly asked Elizabeth. Stanley and Jack, quiet and relaxed from the alcohol they had consumed but clearly interested in the conversation, sat silently, shifting their gazes between Josh and Woody. Do you want me to tell you about her quirks? Yes, Josh insisted. It wasn't as if he was doubting Elizabeth for the first time, considering her to be anything less than wonderful. It wasn't as if he hadn't pondered his mother's words before. It's just that what he had heard was quite shocking, and Josh wanted to get to the bottom of it now, rather than have secrets unravel one by one in the future. Besides, how could you live with someone when you probably didn't know a lot about them? Well, Josh, we weren't exactly close friends with her. She didn't share her secrets with me, the policeman said sarcastically, not wanting to continue the conversation, but he understood that Josh was unlikely to let him off the hook. After all, she was only brought to me occasionally. You said in the beginning that you had so many memories connected to her. Tell me what you remember. Well, that's all in the past. Woody attempted another deflection before giving in. Do you really want to know? Yes. Perhaps if he had learned something like this about his wife when they were just dating or starting their life together, he would have dug deeper and deeper as well. But now, it seemed unlikely. After all, more than 15 years had passed since then. He loved his wife, and they had four children together, so would he intentionally refrain from delving further into it? What did he know about what no longer had any relevance and could only spoil his relationship with his beloved? He sighed heavily. At least Josh and Elizabeth didn't have children together yet, and despite that, it felt terrible to sit there and speak ill of the woman he was planning to propose to. It might all fall apart, and there could have been a happy family instead. On the other hand, who knew? Woody himself couldn't say anything for sure about this Elizabeth, and back in the days when he had dealings with her, she wasn't particularly likable. She had only graduated from college a year ago and was still making a living, perhaps in a less savory manner, and the blindly in love Josh didn't seem to notice. So, perhaps Woody was saving him from these relationships. This is what he consoled himself with, sighed, and replied. Josh, well, she had quite a unique life, just like herself. I don't know about now, but in college, she was quite reserved, didn't get close to anyone. Maybe it was because of her nighttime escapades, but when I asked others about her, they said she was always in need of money. So, we stopped associating with her after a while, realizing she was only with them for the money. When I asked her why she did it or about family problems, she refused to talk about it. By the way, there's one more unpleasant thing. They didn't want to admit her to college at first, I think, but she scored the highest on the exams. Any idea why? Was she on probation or something? Josh asked, looking somewhat displeased. Yeah, in the ninth grade. She was accused of extortion from some old lady. Actually, nothing was clear about it. At first glance, she seemed like an ordinary nice girl, an excellent student. But in reality, she was like that, Woody mused. Sometimes, during our preventive talks, Elizabeth almost cried, as if she did something first and then regretted it, but didn't learn from her mistakes. A very strange girl. Sometimes, I even felt sorry for her, you know. That's why I remembered her so well. Maybe, of course, I've forgotten something now, but it seems like that's the end of her activities. Honestly, now, I'm even glad that she found happiness. I thought her life had finally straightened out. Josh stared at the table, deep in thought. Thank you, he said. Maybe he shouldn't have known all of this. After all, he had never even thought that Elizabeth had such a past. And the main question was, was it the past? Now his mother's words seemed to sound in a new light. Josh's mood dropped again. At the table, the guys were still talking about something, but Josh didn't hear what. His head suddenly started hurting, either from the alcohol or from the information he had just received. What could he say? It was unpleasant to discover that the person he considered the brightest in his life had dirty deeds in her past. Or had Josh idealized Elizabeth too much all this time? Should they postpone the wedding, or should they not dig into the ruins of the past? since Elizabeth was such a wonderful person now. But why did she do all those things back then? There must have been some reason. 
to many financial problems in the family, lost something, got into debt, or did she just want to achieve a luxurious life in that way? Josh had always believed that everyone deserved a second chance. It was actually great that she had managed to completely change her life so that no one even suspected such a past. But what if things weren't as smooth as they seemed at first glance now? Doubts tormented Josh. The simplest and most logical way would be to ask Elizabeth directly about everything. In theory, if Elizabeth is still involved in shady dealings and skillfully conceals everything from Josh, it wouldn't be too hard for her to lie convincingly to all his questions. But if not, she probably wouldn't want to revisit the dark chapter of her past. Perhaps Elizabeth had intentionally concealed it all from Josh so that he wouldn't see any wrongdoing in her, so that he would continue to look at her with the same enamored and sincere eyes as no one had before. Josh left the bar utterly confused. It was getting dark outside. The cool air brushed against his face, but he felt hot and stifled. He just wanted to get home as soon as possible, without trying to gather his scattered thoughts. The alcohol he had consumed throughout the evening was taking its toll. Maybe it was the alcohol that had led Josh to such indignation upon learning Elizabeth's secrets. In a sober state, he might have reacted more calmly and rationally. Yes, he would figure it all out and contemplate it, but not today. Josh had forgotten the gate remote, so he had to crawl underneath it. The security guard, who knew Josh as a respected businessman and a loving father, gave him a puzzled look. What was the difficulty in going through the gate? But he didn't interfere. Josh only arrived home around midnight. Elizabeth was waiting for him in the hallway. Josh offered a crooked smile and met her gaze, but for the first time, it seemed like there was no warmth in her eyes. Either Josh was looking at her differently now, or she was genuinely upset. Serious, prickly, and cold. Where were you? Elizabeth inquired. I was hanging out with the guys, Josh replied. I called you 15 times. Sorry, Josh. It's half past midnight, and even Jennifer couldn't wait for you and fell asleep. You left. You couldn't be bothered to let me know where you were going, and you didn't answer your phone. Elizabeth's voice broke. Be quiet. Josh casually put his finger to her lips. Don't be mad. As it turns out, none of us is perfect. Let's talk about everything a little later. Right now, I really want to sleep. He blinked sleepily and shuffled towards the bedroom. No way. Elizabeth grabbed his hands. First, you'll answer one more question. You're in the state where people tell the truth. She turned Josh to face her, looked into his eyes, and asked, Is it true about your wedding in July? What wedding? Your wedding in July, Elizabeth's attempt to maintain a calm tone was failing. Josh even sobered up for a few seconds. Hold on. How did you find out? That's not important. Elizabeth mumbled. Is it true that you're getting married in July? Just say yes or no. Yes, I am getting married. At your mother's insistence. What mother? My mother has nothing to do with this. On the contrary, it's my decision. Josh. Tears welled up in Elizabeth's eyes, and she whispered, Why didn't you tell me about this? Well, it's not something you usually do, he muttered. I was planning on it, thinking about it, and the ring hasn't arrived yet. I see, Elizabeth said with just her lips, then released Josh's hand. The man stripped off his clothes and collapsed onto the bed. His last thought before he drifted into slumber was, Traitors. Someone among them must have told Elizabeth about the plans for the July wedding and the proposal. I was planning to surprise her. A bright beam of daylight fell onto his face, jolting Josh awake from his sleep. He rubbed his eyes, sat up on the edge of the queen-sized bed, and realized that he was alone and sprawled haphazardly. For the first time since yesterday, he picked up his phone and made two discoveries. A pile of missed calls from Elizabeth and nearly an hour into the day. Despite today being Elizabeth's day off, it wasn't surprising that she had been awake for a while, going about her own business. Josh got up and felt the throbbing in his head. Oh God, why is my head pounding like this? I need to wash up quickly. He stumbled into the bathroom and found Jennifer sitting in the living room, engrossed in watching TV. Oh, Daddy, good morning. It's more like good afternoon. He scratched his head. Why aren't you at daycare? You were sleeping so soundly. I tried to wake you up, but you didn't, and you don't let me go outside by myself, so I decided to watch cartoons. Why by yourself? 
Where's Elizabeth? Jennifer shrugged. I don't know. I saw her last night when I went to sleep, but not today. What do you mean? Where could she have gone? Josh frowned and entered the bathroom. Wait a minute. Why are all the shelves empty? No shampoos, no cream jars, no cosmetics. He rushed back to the bedroom, flung open the closet. Only his clothes were there. By the door, not a single pair of Elizabeth's shoes. He sat down on a stool in the hallway, staring vacantly at the wall. Then suddenly, he snapped out of it, grabbed his phone, and dialed her number. The subscriber is unavailable, came the emotionless voice of the voicemail. Could she have blocked me? Josh tried again and again. What the hell is going on? What could have happened yesterday for her to block my number and disappear? No, 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 she couldn't have done that. The fog in his mind began to clear. Fragments of yesterday's conversation started resurfacing, but Josh still couldn't piece together a coherent picture. He wondered what time he had come back yesterday. There were so many missed calls from Elizabeth. She must have been angry. Did she leave because of that? Did she want him to go to that stupid bar again? What if he had said something to upset her? But all Josh could recall from their conversation yesterday were some odd questions about the wedding. Yes. He had become irritated that someone had warned Elizabeth about it. Josh opened the window and leaned on the sill. The fresh air would help clear his thoughts. There was too much confusion. Could someone from the group, after their meeting yesterday, have called Elizabeth and spilled all his plans? Only Woody, Jack, and Stanley knew everything, but Josh had warned them that it was supposed to be a surprise. Who could have betrayed him like that? Nevertheless, Josh could deal with that later. There was one thing he couldn't understand if she indeed found out about his intentions to propose. Shouldn't she have been delighted? Why would she run away? Stanley's words echoed in his mind. Are you sure Elizabeth herself is ready for marriage and will agree? Everything has to be certain. Maybe you've matured for such a decision, but she may not want to get married yet. That's why she ran from the wedding. In any case, the most important thing now was to find Elizabeth and talk to her. He wouldn't be able to meet her at the restaurant until tomorrow. But where could she be now? If she left in the morning, maybe she was on her way to her grandmother's. If in the evening, she might have rented a hotel room. But these were all just assumptions. What if, in the dead of night, Elizabeth couldn't find a room and had to spend the night outside? Despite the beginning of summer, the nights were still quite chilly, and Josh became genuinely concerned for her. He took a headache pill in the kitchen, slapped his cheeks, and went to change, shouting, Jennifer, turn off the TV and get ready for daycare. Dad, it's too late already. The girl replied, can't we go to grandma's instead? No, we can't go to grandma's right now. Grandma isn't home. He responded sternly and suddenly realized another thing. His mother knew about the wedding too. After dropping off his daughter at daycare, Josh stood outside his car for a long time, feeling tempted to call his mother and ask if she had said anything to Elizabeth. The absurdity of the situation struck him and it was almost comical, but now he could say that Amanda had been wrong. Following this train of thought, Josh concluded that since Elizabeth wasn't holding on to him for financial reasons, she must have buried such tendencies in the past, and most likely, she wasn't involved in any dubious activities to make a living. It was a simplistic conclusion, ignoring many nuances, but Josh preferred not to dwell on them. Elizabeth felt awful. She had been lying on the firm hotel bed, staring at the gray ceiling for hours, replaying everything that had happened and contemplating what would come next. She couldn't sleep much during the night, her thoughts constantly swirling. She was considering whether it would have been better to wait until morning to talk properly and with a clear head, but she had heard everything clearly and understood. What was the point of going through another unpleasant conversation just to convince herself further? She didn't want any more scandals. Her life had seen far too many, so she chose to quietly leave while everyone was asleep. Unfortunately, as much as she wished she could lie in bed all day, she needed to pull herself together and take action. In Elizabeth's plans for today, finding a place to live was a top priority. She couldn't continue commuting daily from her grandmother's place to work, all the way across the city. However, rental apartments in this area were prohibitively expensive. She had enough savings to cover a few months, but those funds were meant for something else entirely. Elizabeth collapsed on the bed once more, feeling exhausted. 
Oh no, will I have to look for an extra source of income again? Thankfully, she still had some money from selling her hair. This thought weighed heavily on her heart. Suddenly, the phone on the table began to ring. It was an unknown number. Elizabeth hesitated for a moment, contemplating whether to answer, but eventually, she did. Hello, Elizabeth. Yes, she replied cautiously. It's Josh. I'm calling from someone else's phone. About yesterday, Elizabeth ended the call. How predictable. Tomorrow, another day at work, and she understood that at the very least, there was another unpleasant conversation ahead, but she wasn't ready for it yet. If Josh truly was such a mercenary person, she didn't want to interact with him, let alone have business dealings. So, Elizabeth decided to delay that conversation. She could always cry later. Right now, there were more important things to consider. Her happiness had ended so abruptly. Not long ago, she had been looking forward to her new, happy life. She spent a long time browsing apartment listings and even scheduled a few viewings. During her six months with Josh, she had grown in accustomed to worrying and figuring everything out. Typically, Josh handled all the issues, including financial ones. The next day, Elizabeth went to work as usual. As she had suspected, Josh soon appeared at the restaurant, or rather, he wasn't exactly hers anymore. Elizabeth's heart started to race. She moved to the far corner of the room and engaged in casual conversation with one of the patrons. She could feel Josh's eyes on her. He stood by a table, patiently waiting for the manager to become available. As soon as that happened, Elizabeth tried to slip away to the restroom. However, just like yesterday, someone deftly caught her wrist. Elizabeth, what's going on? Why are you avoiding me? Josh looked at her with a bewildered, serious expression. I want to talk. You just left without explaining anything. Elizabeth slowly turned around. What's there to explain, Josh? Maybe you were so drunk that you don't remember, but you explained everything perfectly yesterday. Just like your mother did before that, I don't want to talk to you right now. Goodbye, Josh. I need to work. Mother, so you did talk to her after all. But Elizabeth had already freed her hand and locked herself in the restroom. Josh, bewildered, remained alone in the corridor. Suddenly, a wave of anger surged over him, not directed at Elizabeth. No, but at his own mother. Yesterday, she had reassured him over the phone, claiming she hadn't said anything to Elizabeth and had no idea what was going on. Yet here she was, meddling again and attempting to destroy her own sin's family. Josh didn't know what Amanda had told Elizabeth, and to be honest, he didn't want to know. It was undoubtedly something unfavorable. What was strange was that he himself had apparently confirmed it all yesterday. Maybe there was indeed something else that had slipped Josh's mind in his drunken state. However hard he tried to recall more, all he could remember was the peculiar and brief conversation about the wedding. Regardless, Josh had a clear understanding of his mother's tactics. Since she couldn't dissuade him from getting married, she would try the opposite for Elizabeth Sears with all sorts of negative things to ensure she left. Now, Josh had to sort out what had happened himself, win back his beloved, and explain to her about his mother. Josh got into his car, slammed the door shut, and sped off down the highway. He was seething with anger. Heady gray clouds had gathered in the low thunderous sky. The first raindrops splattered on the asphalt. It seemed like even the weather mashed his mood. All that was missing were lightning bolts, but those were flashing in Josh's eyes. He couldn't take it anymore. He dialed his mother's number, enduring several agonizingly long rings before hearing a suspiciously sweet voice on the other end. Son, any news? How's Elizabeth? She emphasized the last question. How's Elizabeth? Are you even asking that? Listen, do you enjoy ruining my life? He shouted into the phone. Wait, Josh, don't shout. What's going on? Answer me. What did you tell her about me? Why is she avoiding me and refusing to talk? Tell me. Are you so sure it was me? Amanda responded with evident bewilderment on the other end of the line. Believe me, I'm sure. Mom, she left because of you. Don't worry. People come and go. You need to learn to let them go. Josh's entire vocabulary had been exhausted by his overwhelming anger. He couldn't find the words to express his outrage. Meanwhile, Amanda continued to speak calmly into the phone. I told you before, this Elizabeth isn't the brightest person. Apparently, she's also nervy and unstable. 
Don't even think about chasing after her. You don't need such an unbalanced wife. If she really loved you, she would never have acted this way. She came up with something and left. Well, it's for the best. Mom, it was you. You made it up. Let her roll, my dear. You should go your own way. Do you even hear me? Why are you doing this to me? It's been like this my whole life. If you don't care about me, at least show some consideration for Elizabeth. She hasn't done anything to you. Tell me what you said to her and why. Silence. Josh even checked to see if his mother had hung up. What difference does it make? A finally indifferent voice replied, What's done is done. Have you already felt the relief? It's so much easier to breathe when you don't have an intrusive girlfriend around. You know what? I breathe much better with her than with you. Please, stay out of my life. Disappear, or I'll disappear from yours. Josh, what are you saying? Amanda stammered, clearly taken aback. But Josh couldn't be stopped anymore. I dreamed of getting away from you even in childhood, but you keep haunting me in my adult life. So lie there in the hospital. Maybe it will make you think for once. Can buy. He hung up the call. A feeling of an ease washed over him, and suddenly, Josh felt a stinging sensation in his eyes. What had he just said to his mother? To be honest, he didn't expect that from himself. It was as if everything he had been holding in for all these years had just spilled out but it didn't make his heart any lighter. The rain outside intensified, and Josh was driving like a maniac. Up ahead, there was a pedestrian crossing. Red light. Stop. In the nick of time, Josh slammed on the brakes, but he splashed a little old man carrying a massive tube on his back, which was probably bigger than the man himself, with dirty water. The old man flinched and shielded himself with his hands. Josh jumped out of the car. Are you okay? Everything all right? Let me give you a lift, he offered. The old man didn't resist, took his instrument off his back, placed it on the rear seat, and then climbed in himself. Horns were blaring behind them, so Josh hurried to drive away. Sorry again. Where are you headed? Josh asked, glancing at the old man in the rearview mirror. It's nothing. I'm fine. Yeah, I have some business nearby. I'll tell you which courtyard to turn into. You can go ahead. Josh struggled with the desire to start talking to the old man about all his suddenly overwhelming problems. He really wanted to have a conversation with him, to vent and not keep his emotions bottled up. Usually, after heartfelt conversations, things got better. He suddenly realized that sometimes it's easier for strangers to open up than it is for someone close. You can tell them everything you want, and you'll never see that person again. But with someone close, you'll have to look them in the eye for the rest of your life. The man discreetly examined his passenger through the rearview mirror. The passenger sat there with a mysterious half-smile, gazing out the window. For some reason, such people often inspired trust in him. So he decided to break the silence that had already dragged on for too long. What's that large instrument you have there? He asked. A tuba. I was actually heading to the studio where I usually play. The old man replied, Wow, you have your own studio. No, not really. It's just that I and three of my friends rent it to get together in the evenings and play together. We had our quartet since our youth. So, you have your own band. That's amazing. Do you perform anywhere? The old man shook his head sadly. Only on the streets or in the subway. We travel to different parts of the city and play for people, hoping that someone will notice us. You could say we're wandering musicians. Giving real concerts is my unfulfilled dream. I want people to notice and appreciate my creativity. But alas, everyone around is always in a rush, including, for example, you. I'm not in a hurry today. Josh whispered under his breath, but the old man didn't hear him. The old man spoke in a measured, slightly hoarse voice, which somewhat calmed Josh. His thoughts shifted from his mother to something entirely different. He had long harbored the idea of having live music in his restaurants. It was beautiful and would surely elevate the status of his establishments. Moreover, the old man described everything so touchingly that Josh felt a strong desire to help him. Take this turn here. The old man directed. Josh obediently turned into the indicated courtyard and opened the door for his passenger. Could I listen to your music? Josh asked. Listen. The old man looked surprised. Well, sure, you can come with me. Josh was slightly embarrassed and shrugged. Can we do that right now? Are all of you here? Yes. 
We always rehearse on Fridays. Actually, why not? What's your name? The old man asked as he led Josh down a staircase leading somewhere into the basement. Josh, the man replied, glancing at the peeling walls. A good name. My father was named Josh. I'm Leonard. The door at the bottom was open, and they entered a cozy room. It was surprisingly simply furnished, with warm lighting. Vintage posters adorned the walls, and musical instruments, including a ukulele, a zither, a tambourine, and several strange ones, whose names Josh didn't know, were scattered around. In the middle of the room, there were four chairs, three of which were occupied by similarly endearing old men. They held a flute, a violin, and a saxophone in their hands. Leonard introduced Josh to his friends and seated him on a bench by the entrance. For a while, the old men discussed something, but suddenly, Sam, the one with the violin, applied the bow to the strings, and the first bold notes burst forth. A chill ran down Josh's spine. The melody was fast and enchanting. He hadn't expected such skill from Leonard. The other musicians joined in with their instruments. First, a light and gentle flute blended in. Then the saxophone took the lead in solo. And finally, the tuba sang with its deep, resonant voice. It was amazing how these four seemingly different instruments created such beautiful music. If Josh hadn't known that these old men were just wandering musicians playing on the streets and in the subway, he would have thought they were professional musicians giving concerts. The men looked inspired and relaxed, as if their fingers were moving on their own accord. Josh marveled at how effortlessly they played. They finished the first piece and almost immediately started on the next. The second melody was melancholic, flowing softly and insidiously, like deceitful moonlight, enveloping the mind. Josh was determined to invite them to his restaurant. None of his establishments had a dedicated space for live music, but for the time being, Josh would come up with something or pay the builders and planners more to expedite the process. He could already picture how it would look in the renovated version, and how delighted Leonard and his group would be when they found out they had finally been noticed. Elizabeth would definitely appreciate this idea. Perhaps if Josh hadn't decided to bring musicians into his restaurant now, she might have suggested it later. She might have even found a band herself. Josh had already decided that as soon as he got home, he would share his idea with his girlfriend and consult with her on everything. But that wasn't going to happen. She had left. A new wave of despair washed over Josh, and even the violin, in its part at that moment, seemed to weep. Elizabeth, how could he approach her now? Intercept her, explain. He longed to know what was on her mind. She must be going through something too, but given her character, she might not be ready for a conversation anytime soon. That's the trap his mother set for him. He didn't even know what she had said to make Elizabeth feel this way. She did it right before one of the most intimate and significant moments. It would be a disaster if he had to postpone the proposal because of this. Yes, Josh had decided that Elizabeth's dark past wouldn't bother him and wouldn't affect his decision. Well, at least not too much. Okay, maybe a little. He just wanted to know for sure. Okay, he had to admit that he was worried about it. He had so many questions for Elizabeth. He would have to find a way to learn everything, but in the most gentle way possible. Suddenly, Josh froze. A crazy idea struck him. Of course, he could ask Elizabeth directly about everything, but it might be unpleasant for her. So why resort to extremes when he could be smarter about it? He thought back to how he had recently told a stranger about himself and found that sometimes it was easier for strangers to bring out someone's secrets. What if he asked Leonard to discreetly find out from her? or not? What if he became that stranger himself? Pretend to be a wandering musician. Ask her if he could play for the restaurant's patrons. At first, the idea seemed too unrealistic and crazy, but it had taken root in his mind so strongly that Josh couldn't help but explore it further. Of course, it wouldn't be that simple. Josh didn't think Elizabeth would readily allow a strange old man to perform in a prestigious restaurant. At the very least, he needed to get permission from the manager, if not from himself. Josh chuckled thoughtfully. If Elizabeth approached him for permission, that would be a plus. It would provide a reason to initiate a conversation with her. If she didn't, he would have to act under the guise of the old man. In reality, if the operation were successful, it could help him get to know Elizabeth on a much deeper level. How would she treat a regular, less fortunate person? Would she want to help? 
Would she show sympathy and compassion? Or would she be dismissive? Would she pity or reject him? If she didn't immediately show him the door, he could at least try to engage her in conversation and find out what was truly on her mind. Josh wasn't entirely sure if he could pull all of this off, but if he did. A man had once said that Josh was blindly in love with Elizabeth, which was why he saw her through rose-colored glasses, not noticing her flaws. Not that Josh was seriously doubting his choice, but such an experiment could reveal a lot. Josh would be thoroughly convinced, or... On this thought, Josh sighed slowly and heavily, feeling disappointed in his decision. Then it hit him for the second time. If Elizabeth passed the test, he could eventually shed the disguise and propose to her. That's what he understood the element of surprise. Even if she knew about his plans, nothing would stop Josh from delivering a genuine surprise. He would tell her everything that truly transpired, confess everything, declare his love, and get down on one knee. What a wonderful plan, and nothing would stand in his way at least, that's what he thought. Suddenly, Josh realized another, not insignificant, problem. He hadn't played any musical instrument in ages. Back in his school years, he had tried to play the guitar. One of his classmates had dreams of starting a music band, but all of that was in the past. Josh could barely recall the chords. If he managed to resurrect those long-forgotten skills and play something remotely resembling music, it would be a significant feat on his part. That meant he would need Leonard's help along with his group. If he simply stood in the background, holding an instrument to appear legitimate, no one would notice that there were only four musicians. So, he needed to warn the musicians in advance, ask them to accompany him, and then pay for their assistance. That's exactly what Josh did. After listening to all the compositions, he addressed the group and told them everything straightforwardly. A love story, then. Leonard said thoughtfully, just like Romeo and Juliet. Josh was taken aback by the comparison. He understood he was talking to people of the arts, but he had no desire to become a dramatic character himself. What do you mean? Romeo and Juliet her. He tried to protest, but nobody was listening. It'll be more beautiful than Shakespeare. Leonard continued. I'll be a part of this. Maybe that's why I've gone through this musical journey for the most important final concert. Or not the final one, but the very first. The more pragmatic Sam winked at his friend. Josh, we'll play at your wedding, won't we? And then many, many more times, right? Josh nodded. He was ready to agree to anything as long as he could reconcile with Elizabeth. Josh only ventured out into the street late in the evening. They had been discussing the operation for several hours. When he got home, he went over the plan once more, searching for a skilled makeup artist who could cleverly disguise his face and attire with accessories. For example, one of the most critical items was a set of mustache and beard, something that would prevent Elizabeth from recognizing him. The operation was scheduled for seven non-consecutive days. It made no sense to spend several hours in makeup and come on weekends. A few more days were dedicated to preparation. Interestingly, Elizabeth didn't call or message Josh once during this time, but the day X had finally arrived. It was sweltering under the wig. The weather had been gloomy for several days in a row, but now the sun was blazing. Josh stood on the corner of the restaurant, under the scorching sun, waiting for the rest of the group. Although calling this strange, hunched over old man Josh was no longer possible. Several layers of makeup had been applied to him, along with a gray beard and thick brows. He was dressed in a ridiculous, colorful outfit, and to complete the look, he was given an old, battered guitar that had been stored in the garage of one of the old men. Josh wanted to object, saying he had already bought his own guitar, but Leonard looked at the instrument and then at its owner with almost pity. Josh, your guitar is just missing the price tag. It's obvious it's new, straight from the store. Don't spoil the illusion, please, Leonard said. Josh had put in a lot of effort, even taking music lessons from Sam, who played not only the violin, but also the guitar. Nevertheless, progress was being made. Josh's fingers remembered how to play. Leonard decided that it wouldn't be a big deal if the new member of their group occasionally strummed a few chords. Josh breathed a sigh of relief when he saw the familiar quartet of musicians on the other side of the street. Finally, they had arrived, a little longer, and he would have melted in this costume due to the heat. Fortunately, he didn't need to doubt the credibility of his disguise. 
When the musicians headed towards the corner, they didn't even pause. They just went straight to the restaurant's door, hoping to find Josh already inside. Their amazement knew no bounds when a gray-haired old man with a raspy voice hailed them and began insisting that he and Josh were the same person. How should we proceed? Sam asked. Let's just go in and ask if we can play right away. Josh nodded. He looked around briefly. Elizabeth wasn't in the room. So, he motioned for everyone to stand by the door to the kitchen and start the performance. To ensure they wouldn't be assured out, they needed to make a proper impression. Leonard and his team chose a beautiful composition that perfectly suited the overall atmosphere. Josh stood a little apart, trying not to draw too much attention to himself, carefully looking out for Elizabeth. They didn't have to wait long. Less than two minutes passed before a waitress approached them. Good evening. Who are you? She inquired. We. We're musicians. Leonard responded. Josh quickly joined the group to take over the conversation. Yes, we're wandering musicians. He confirmed, trying to make his voice sound as old as possible. Did someone invite you to play here? The waitress asked, suspiciously eyeing the group as if they were thieves or robbers. No, we just came to share our art with the people. We have some beautiful compositions. It's a shame you didn't get to hear them, Josh replied. That's nice and all, the waitress said, but we already have live music. I think you should leave. You just didn't listen long enough. One of the musicians chimed in. Can you call someone from management? He insisted. Is there a manager or director here? There is, but I don't think it's a good time to bother her. The waitress replied. Please, summon her, Josh insisted. I'm sure she would tell you the same thing I did. Elizabeth is very busy right now. Josh rolled his eyes. He had never liked this waitress. No recorded tracks can compare to live music, he said. I'll go talk to her myself. Listen, the waitress called, grabbing his arm. Our manager is in the process of leaving. In a few days, she won't be working here anymore, and right now, she's helping train a new employee. So, I suggest that you go talk to the director when she takes over. Josh froze. In the process of leaving. Why? When did this happen? He had no idea that while he was actively preparing for the operation over the past few days, Elizabeth had reconsidered some things to avoid paying a lot of money for rent. Looking for side gigs and crossing paths with Josh, she had decided to quit her job, even though her current job was good. She planned to move in with her grandmother and find a new place in that area. She understood that it was a risky decision, but she already had experience working in a good restaurant, so she was confident she could find another job in the same field. Josh stood there in confusion for a few seconds, falling out of character, he had no prior knowledge of any of this, so he only had a few days left. But what exactly did a few days mean? Would his team have enough time to execute the entire plan, or would they have to cut corners, or worse, cancel the operation? Realizing that he had been standing there lost in thought for too long, Josh quickly replied, straight to the director, Why such extremes? I assure you, our conversation with the manager won't take long. If she had already left her post, then fine, but she's still working for. Could you tell me how many days? Three days in total, including today, the waitress replied. All right, I'll call her. She conceded and disappeared behind the door. When Elizabeth appeared at the door, Josh's heart skipped a beat and froze. He hadn't seen her for just a few days, but it felt like an eternity since their last meeting. How much he missed her, she was so dear to him. Only her cropped hair still looked quite unusual. Elizabeth, always so bright and cheerful, now looked very sad and tired. Josh felt the urge to approach and hug her. I'm sorry, but I'll have to ask you to leave the building, she said in a quiet but firm voice. Elizabeth looked directly at Josh, held her gaze on him for a couple of seconds, but then looked away, not recognizing him. Please, let us stay, Josh pleaded, with some embarrassment, realizing he was beginning to beg. We play really beautiful music, and right now, we can prove it to you. Elizabeth just nodded. Apparently, at that moment, distant thoughts were crowding her mind. So, the only thing Josh could come up with was to play on her sympathy. Miss, please, try to understand our situation. We are wandering musicians who want as many people as possible to hear and be moved by our music. Unfortunately, 
we can only find such listeners in cultural establishments like this restaurant. We don't have the money for our own concerts. As soon as we save up, we will leave, but we will always remember your kindness. Elizabeth sighed, looking slightly flustered. You're not officially here. They won't be able to pay you for this, and standing here isn't the best option. Elizabeth tried to explain all this as delicately as possible, and Josh liked that. Yes, and please understand, I'm not the one in charge here, and I can't make such decisions. Even if I agree, what if the owner comes here? Exactly. The restaurant owner. You can call him and ask. Josh perked up. I mean, I think he'd be all for it. I believe so. I don't think so. Besides, I'm a bit busy right now. Let's not argue, and you'll just leave. Elizabeth replied. Miss, please, empathize with us. The saxophonist chimed in. Maybe you'll let us stay at least until the evening. Josh begged. You'll see that people like it. And later, when you have some free time, you can talk to the owner about us. I'm not sure. It was clear that Elizabeth was struggling with the decision. You would be helping us tremendously, Leonard said. Come on, Elizabeth. Don't let us down. Agree. Josh thought. There were about three hours left until the restaurant closed, so allowing them to stay until the evening wouldn't be such a terrible decision. All right, Elizabeth finally gave in, but only until the evening. And please, step aside a bit. Josh let out a sigh of relief. However, on that day, he didn't get to see much of Elizabeth. He even started to think that this whole scheme was somewhat primitive, but there was no turning back now. The entire group played their best compositions with great enthusiasm and inspiration. As soon as the restaurant closed and the concert came to an end, Josh generously compensated each of the musicians for today's performance. When picking up Jennifer from the daycare, Josh had to spend several minutes convincing his daughter and the caregivers that it was really him and peeling off the glued-on beard. At home, it took him a lot of time to transform back into himself. Oh, how good it felt to be without makeup, a wig, and a hot costume. Two days. That's exactly how much time he had left to uncover the truth and bring Elizabeth back. Josh stood in the shower for a long time, contemplating his next course of action. Most of the operation would have to be shortened, but what were the chances of success then? Today hadn't brought much progress. It was still uncertain whether the musicians could come back tomorrow, but even if the answer turned out to be negative, Josh would resort to a heavy-handed approach himself, that eyes, the owner. He would come up with something, pretend that he somehow learned about the concert, fell in love with the music, and insisted on keeping the group. Fortunately, he didn't have to go to extremes. After stepping out of the shower, Josh noticed several missed calls from the restaurant's director. When he called back, he found out that the calls were about today's event. It turned out that literally every one of the visitors, the staff, and the management had heard today's concert, and they were all pleasantly surprised. The director asked Josh for his opinion on this matter, to which he instantly replied that they should keep the musicians permanently. That was it. One problem solved. It was just a pity that it wasn't Elizabeth who called. Josh was glad that she had understood the musicians' situation and had shown them mercy. This only reinforced his belief that he had made the right choice. However, he still hadn't received any messages or calls from her. No matter how many times he tried to reach out, the block remained. The restaurant opened at 10 in the morning, and the whole band was waiting at the door in full force. Josh had to wake up at 6 to drop Jennifer off at daycare and apply his disguise. Before crossing the threshold, Josh took a deep breath. He had to start the main part of his plan right now. Today, Elizabeth wasn't occupied with training a new employee. So she was in the hall, merely doing her job. She led the group to their designated spot and spent some time explaining the basics, such as rules, dress code, and salaries. Josh continued to be open, chatty, and overall, a comfortable person to be around, in hopes that Elizabeth would quickly realize she could trust him. However, it turned out to be much more complicated than he had expected. She never ventured into personal conversations, which was quite understandable. But for the first time, Josh noticed how dedicated she was to her work. It was challenging to discern what was on her mind because she was polite and kind to everyone, with a cute half-smile on her face. It seemed like her exhaustion from the previous day had vanished or was skillfully concealed behind a mask. By evening, Josh was close to despair. 
thinking that another day had been spent in vain. Perhaps he should just give up on this endeavor and have a direct conversation with Elizabeth. However, just a few minutes before closing time, when there were hardly any customers left, they managed to talk a little. Josh understood that he had gained some favor with her after all. Of course, this conversation didn't reveal much, but Elizabeth did mention that tomorrow would indeed be her last day working at the restaurant. Are you really not going to miss this place at all? Josh inquired, seemingly in passing. I will, Elizabeth admitted quietly but didn't elaborate. Don't you want to say goodbye to this place tomorrow somehow? Maybe have dinner here. Remember everything that tied you to it. I could accompany you, just to sit and share your feelings. Nothing more. I don't know, we'll see. Elizabeth awkwardly shrugged. Therefore, Josh decided not to abandon his operation and see it through to the end. He suddenly realized that he had nothing to lose. Even if nothing came of it, he had one fail-safe option. Catch up with her, even in costume. Confess everything and talk. Maybe, maybe she would even appreciate the fact that he had pursued her in such a crazy way. And the next day, she agreed. Josh felt nervous sitting across from her, knowing that this was the most critical moment of the operation. Yes, he had spent the entire previous evening thinking about how to start the conversation. Yes, he had prepared a script. Yes, everything was under control. So now it all depended on how he would execute it in reality. Well, and on Elizabeth, of course. Leonard and the rest of the group were delighted that everything was going according to the initial plan. The musicians played their most romantic and heart-wrenching melody from their repertoire. Josh and Elizabeth were sitting right beside them. The place they had chosen for dinner was cozy and modest. Rays of orange evening light fell on the table and the chairs. The soft velvet gleamed beautifully. In other words, the atmosphere was indescribable. If only Josh were himself and not a suspicious, clingy old man, the date would have been perfect. The waitress, the same one who had noticed the group the day before, placed two salads, two desserts, and two glasses of wine on the table, giving both visitors a strange sideways glance. Josh noticed that the girl seemed noticeably more relaxed. Thank you for suggesting we stay for a while, the girl suddenly said emotionally. After all, it's worth saying goodbye to the place where I've worked for the past two years. I agree. It's always important to make time for that. And you? Won't they have anything to say about you leaving the group while they're still performing? Elizabeth asked. Josh was taken aback but managed to conceal it. No, everything's fine. We have several compositions that don't require my participation. Just like the others, we can't play continuously. We take breaks every few tracks. I see. Elizabeth nodded and took a sip of wine. So, are you free now? Completely. Elizabeth squinted her eyes. You know, I have this strong feeling of deja vu right now. You remind me of someone. Who? Josh tensed. His true identity shouldn't be revealed prematurely. I can't figure it out. But probably someone good because you inspire trust in me. Honestly, I've wanted to talk to someone for a while. But how long? About a week. What happened? It's related to your resignation. She chuckled and lowered her gaze to her plate, but Josh understood that it was merely a defense mechanism, and behind the smile, she was trying to hide something else, something far from joyful. You wouldn't believe how many times I've been asked that question in the last couple of days, Elizabeth sighed. To tell you the truth, it's connected to some family circumstances. Oh, I don't know what happened, but I'm really sorry. Me too, the girl whispered, me too. Would you like to tell me about it? Often, it feels better to talk about it. If you want, I could be your personal psychologist today. As a secret, I'll tell you that I used to work as one in my youth, so I know various pieces of advice and techniques. I don't think you can help me with anything. She waved her hand lazily and pressed the button on the table, summoning the waitress. I'd like to have a juice. She explained, I'm not very fond of alcohol. After their order was placed, and Elizabeth turned to the old man, he continued slowly. At least I will try to help. Maybe, even if just a little, I'm sure it will make you feel better. Elizabeth shyly shrugged her shoulders. Actually, I'd be happy to, but I'd have to involve someone else associated with this restaurant, and in the future, you'll probably encounter them frequently. No, no, don't worry. I'm here just to listen and assist a lovely young lady. 
You don't need to mention specific names, and if it comforts you, our conversation will be entirely confidential. Josh tried his best to use as many strange words and phrases as possible, ones he would never use himself. Overall, judging by the young woman's reaction, the conversation was working well to loosen her up. Before this day, he didn't even know he had these abilities. You know what? The girl suddenly began decisively. Let's do the opposite. No confidentiality. You'd better tell everyone that their boss is a complete scoundrel. Josh was taken aback by such a sharp response, and along with it, he felt a deep sense of hurt and discomfort. Why would Elizabeth be so angry with him? What could he have possibly done? Well, if you insist, Josh nodded in bewilderment. You can start. Oh, God, Elizabeth put her elbows on the table and pressed her fingers to her temples. You see, the owner of this restaurant, Josh, turned out to be just a terrible person. I dated him for over a year, truly loved him, and genuinely hoped to build a real, strong family with him. Do you know how he treated me? How do you feel about infidelity? Josh raised his eyebrows in astonishment. What kind of questions are these? How do you think I could feel about it? Did he cheat on you? I don't know that anymore, but I believe he did. In reality, he did something far worse. Elizabeth discreetly wiped a tear from her face. To him, I was temporary and a backup option. It turns out that all this time, he already had a fiancé, and their wedding is set for this summer. You see, she's more promising and advantageous for him. The girl sobbed. And how did you find all this out? He asked in a hushed tone. From his mother. He didn't introduce us for so long because he knew she could tell me everything. Well, what if it's not true after all? Did you ask him about it? Of course, the girl sobbed again. As soon as he came home, I asked him, is it true that you're getting married in July? And he just blinked and said, how did you find out? I asked, why didn't you tell me about this? And he said, I was just about to, but that's not how it's usually done. Of course, normal people don't do such things. Sorry for my rant. It's just that I've wanted to pour out my emotions to someone for so long. Josh gently potted the girl's hand. Yes, I understand completely. Unfortunately, there are moral monsters in this world. He said with bitterness, forgetting he was speaking about himself. Here's what coincidences can bring about in life. Back then, he thought they were discussing their wedding. He wondered how Elizabeth had found out about everything before his proposal. Look, it seems like they're bringing your juice. Josh tried to comfort the girl, pointing to the waiter with a tray. You need to have a drink and calm down. We'll talk it through now. The waiter was indeed heading towards their table. He was almost there when suddenly, in the next moment, there were too many unexpected events. The waiter, passing through the musical zone, tripped over a guitar case left and attended. The tray with drinks toppled over, and the young man himself flew right at Josh, waving his arms as if trying to grasp the air. As a result, the entire floor was covered in colorful drinks, and the waiter ended up on Josh's lap. Sorry. He immediately got up as soon as he came to his senses. I'll clean this up right away, and I'll bring everything again. Yes, Josh sighed with his accustomed elderly voice, watching a cleaning lady approaching them. What unexpected things happen in these restaurants. He turned to Elizabeth. The girl sat in complete shock, staring at Josh, wide-eyed, with still wet, tear-stained eyelashes. What's wrong? You're looking at me as if I, as if I were your ex. Josh tried to joke, unable to come up with a better comparison to her gaze. Ironic, she whispered, adjust your beard. It took a few seconds before Josh realized what had happened. With trembling hands, he reached for his face and realized that the waiter, grabbing his fake beard, had shifted it. Well, there's no need to describe the subsequent scene. Elizabeth jumped up and rushed out of the restaurant, with Josh following her. Fortunately, he didn't need to pretend to be a feeble, hunched old man anymore and put on his frail voice, so he sprinted after his beloved. However, it was evident that the sudden revelation had given Elizabeth strength because when Josh reached the street, he couldn't see anyone. For several minutes, he futilely wandered through courtyards and streets until he finally spotted her sitting in the park on a bench under a tree. The girl was no longer crying. She just stared at the ground with a vacant expression, processing what had just happened. Josh never thought he would have to sneak up on his girlfriend to avoid scaring her away. Lately, she had been running off too often. 
Elizabeth, he gently called her, approaching from behind and sitting down beside her. The girl flinched, gave the man another indifferent look from head to toe, but didn't run away, although Josh was ready to grab her hand. You look very ridiculous in this costume, and here I thought this old man was going to pester me, she said quietly. Nevertheless, you didn't recognize me. I won't even ask why this circus was arranged. It was for me to understand what happened and what nonsense my mother told you. She, well, she was against our relationship because she thought you were with me only for the money. So, she made up all of this. Josh also lowered his head dejectedly and stared at his feet. Although I never thought she would go this far, Elizabeth, why did you run away without sorting things out? Can parents really do such a thing? Well, as it turns out, yes. I was very afraid to introduce you because my mom always suspected someone in you. But you confirmed her words to me. Well, back then, I wasn't in the best state for that conversation. And as it turns out, we misunderstood each other. I meant a completely different wedding back then. I thought one of our friends leaked information to you about. Josh was waiting for some kind of response from Elizabeth, but all he saw in her questioning gaze was an awkward continuation. You were going to propose to me, weren't you? She asked directly. Her eyes were still swollen and bewildered, but now they held something entirely different. Josh sighed loudly. It's funny how you want to create a surprise, make everything perfect, but it always ends up differently. Elizabeth remained silent, and her silence said it all better than any words could. It's true. Josh squeezed her hand, who knew it would all turn out so absurdly, and we wouldn't understand each other. It was supposed to be a surprise that just fell apart. Elizabeth, I love you. You've always been my top priority. Really? Of course. I love you too, she whispered. No longer in the past tense, but at tonight's dinner, Josh smiled with relief. Elizabeth nodded. In the past, in the present, and in the future, they both said in unison. They sat together in the nearly empty park, looking at each other. Elizabeth had mixed feelings. Suddenly, Josh realized that while chasing after perfection, people often miss the ordinary moments, which can be more important than any meticulously planned events. It's in these moments that all the most valuable, intimate, and sensitive things lie. He didn't care any more about what had happened before. He only knew one thing he loved Elizabeth and wanted to be with her always. Josh pulled her close and whispered in her ear, Will you be my wife? But you know, the ring still hasn't arrived. Elizabeth suddenly covered her face with her hands again. Hey, what's wrong? Josh leaned in closer to her. Josh, her voice came out muffled. Before all of this, there's something else you should know. I never told you because I was so scared. In reality, I didn't just live with my grandmother. I also have a younger brother. Josh furrowed his brows. You have a younger brother? Yes. Wait, hold on. Why have I never seen him? He's not exactly typical. He's disabled. He's 13 now, but he can hardly speak, and he can't do anything by himself. He needs constant care and expensive medications. My mother ran away as soon as he was born, and my grandmother couldn't handle it. So, I've been taking care of him my whole life, but I couldn't live like that. So from the age of 14, I was looking for any odd jobs to pay for his boarding school. It was a terrible time. I did some crazy things. I love Philip but he's like a burden on me. I always dreamed of talking to him, playing with him, seeing a real child in him, like Jennifer. I only found relief when I finally got a proper job. I managed to pay for his boarding school every month now, where professional doctors look after him. But before, when there was not enough money, I had to bring him back home and juggle care with endless odd jobs. Elizabeth clutched a strand of her light hair and sniffled bitterly. Because of the debts that remained from those times, I had to cut my hair. You can't imagine how hard it was for me, and how much I cried afterward. I had been taking care of them since childhood. Why didn't you ever tell me about this? Josh asked in amazement. The puzzle pieces in his head were finally coming together. There were many reasons for that. I was afraid you'd think I was with you for money. In my first year of college, I dated a guy for a couple of months but he dumped me as soon as he found out about my problems. That's when I realized it was my problem alone. I couldn't involve someone else in it. Because of me, people close to me like Jennifer and you could be dragged into my family and all the problems associated with it. 
That's right, Elizabeth. We are close to you. You shouldn't have kept this hidden and endured it all alone. Josh picked her up and carried her to the car. Let's go see him right now. But first, I need to freshen up. Josh never did tell Elizabeth the real reason he pretended to be an old man. He didn't reveal that he knew very well what kind of odd job she was talking about or what he suspected her of. She had already been through so much, and he didn't think she needed to know those details. Right now, he wanted to show her maximum care and support, letting her know he accepted her no matter what. And indeed, Elizabeth realized that all the horrors were behind her, and she had found true love. She continued working at the restaurant. They visited Philip several times a week. Josh paid for more advanced medical treatment, and as we'll see in the future, it bore fruit. They focused on developing their restaurants, adding live music to each one. They created a cozy home and helped Elizabeth's grandmother. However, the July wedding had to be postponed to September. This was due to an unfortunate event in Josh's life, even though they had started a new, happy chapter. Amanda passed away a few days after their argument. Josh blamed himself for those words. Please don't interfere in my life. Just disappear from it. He hadn't called his mother once during those days while she was still alive, and he never apologized. Now, he would never see her again. Regardless of what kind of person Amanda was, she was his mother above all else. Later, one of the hospital staff handed Josh a note from his mother, which she had written just minutes before her death. Josh unfolded it with trembling hands and read just three sentences. Forgive me for everything, my dear. I love you. Be happy. Below was the signature. Your mom.